Last week in Philadelphia, the Hurricanes earned their third straight Big East victory, a 42-7 route of the Temple Owls, putting Miami in control of their own destiny. The Canes have been riding the strong legs of junior tailback Edger and James, his third straight 100-yard-plus performance, 137 yards and three touchdowns against the Owls. Last year on a Thursday night in Pittsburgh, the Panthers pull off a four-point upset. Pittsburgh on their way to a winning regular season. It sent the Canes spiraling toward mediocrity. Miami has their chance for revenge tonight, and they need a win to force a Big East title showdown with Syracuse on November 28th. It's Miami and Pittsburgh next here on Sports Channel. From the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, Sports Channel presents Miami Hurricanes football. Tonight, the 22nd ranked Hurricanes look to improve their record to five and one in the Big East when they battle the Pittsburgh Panthers. Hi everybody, I'm Frank Fort, once again to call the play-by-play -play, and the analysis will come from that former University of Pittsburgh quarterback, John Congemi. John, it's been a, a good season for Miami and particularly on the offensive side of the football. But when you look at the difference in this team right now to game three last year, a Thursday night up in Pittsburgh, you, you see why they're so much better because there has been a haul over on the offense. Well, the complexion is com is changed entirely, especially you know at the skill positions. You take a look, Scott Covington in, you get Edron James, and you get Reggie Wayne is the only starter starting against Pittsburgh tonight that started the game last year in Pittsburgh. So you have entire offensive line change, and they're playing at a high level right now. That offensive line is leading this team, and I think they're leading the running game in Edron James. Now, well, you mentioned Edger and James, and you say, well, didn't he start last year? Well, at the time, Dyrell McMillan was the starting tailback. Edger and James started the season somewhat slowly by his standards. In the last three games, he's been gangbusters. Well, he's trying to get that 1,000-yard clip again, and he's just done a terrific job in the last three ball games. You see 481 yards, an average of 5.5 yards, seven touchdowns. He had also another touchdown receiving. He's just an incredible back. He's very versatile. He can get to the outside. He can run between the tackles. He'll follow his blocking. As you see here, Will McPartland does a great job kicking out on the Temple linebacker, and he goes in for an easy score he can do it all he can catch Frank he can run in the open field and it's hard to bring down in the open field Pitt's gonna have to gang tackle him to be successful and Edger needs 104 yards to get a thousand yard season he would be the first back in Miami history ever to do it twice and coincidentally do it in back-to-back -back seasons now for the Pittsburgh Panthers they're struggling along two and seven oh and five in the Big East Walt Harris was the Big East coach of the year last year. He didn't turn stupid in 12 months. No, he's shaking his head over. I talked with him. We spoke with him before the game. It's a tough situation for Walt Harris. He expected this to happen to him last year. He didn't think he had the, the guns to go into the Big East. Well, he had a surprise team. They really played well and won some big games. The last three losses they had were very disappointing. They had games that they thought they should have won. Actually, in two of those ball games, they were leading at halftime. So it's a disappointing season for Walt Harris and the Pitt Panthers. Yes, sir. And two of those games they were leading at home against Tennessee and Rutgers and wound up losing. Now, a guy, if you look at the national stats, the one guy who stands out for Pittsburgh is Hank Poteet, the senior cornerback. He's tied for the lead in the country in interceptions per game and also a dangerous return man. Yeah, six interceptions. He's back to his natural position at the cornerback. Now, his stats read he leads the country. Actually, he's tied for interception average with .67 balls a game. So I guess he's almost going to get a football <laughs> every time he intercepts it. But he does a great job for the Panthers, especially on the corner, and he adds some stability to their special teams. Now, Pittsburgh is only is 20th nationally in yardage allowed, but they're giving up 27 points a game. So they've, they've had to work on a lot of short fields because of turnovers by the offense. We'll see how that plays out tonight. We'll have the opening kickoff from the Orange Bowl. It's Miami and the Pittsburgh Panthers coming up next here on Sports Channel. University of Miami football on Sports Channel is being brought to you in part by Bell South and its international family of customers. By Grand Prize Chevrolet Oldsmobile, located in Miami, where Jimmy Johnson does business. By Office Depot, business is crazy, but Office Depot makes sense. By Sitgo, depend on Sitgo when it counts. By Hoover, nobody gets the dirt like Hoover, nobody. And by Mazda, come see what happens when a car company has more engineers and fewer accountants. It's time for Big East football. The Pittsburgh Panthers against the number 22 Miami Hurricanes from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Frank Fort and John Kinjemi with you on Sports Channel. As you look at Walt Harris, the Big East coach of the year a year ago in his second season at Pittsburgh. The record is his total head coaching uh, record in college football as he talks to his quarterback, Mac Lytle. 
and Butch Davis in his fourth season at the University of Miami, a 28 and 14 record in those four years, and has the Hurricanes on track now. If they can win this football game against the Pittsburgh Panthers, they'll play for the Big East Championship against Syracuse on November 28th. Miami won the toss and deferred. Pittsburgh will receive going left to right. The kickoff from Todd Seavers, the freshman Hank Poteet and Brandon Williams are the deep back. Seavers pounds it deep with the wind in his back into the end zone and out of it. It is a touchback for Pittsburgh. They will start first and 10 at the 20. There is a look at the Pittsburgh quarterback, Mac Lytle, the senior from Wyomissing, Pennsylvania, 6'4", 225, completes about 56% of his passes, 15 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. As Walt Harris installed a new offense last year and Pete Gonzalez, from uh, Miami thrived in that offense. The Miami native, he graduated after throwing a Big East record 31 touchdown passes, but Pittsburgh has struggled offensively, especially in the running game. Chris Schneider and Brandon Williams in the eye behind Lytle. This is Williams. Runs into a big pile. Quincy Hicks leading the charge for the Hurricanes, and it is no game. Let's take a look at the Pittsburgh offense. Brandon Williams, the much ballyhooed running back uh, from right outside Pittsburgh, New Kensington, Pennsylvania. In the offensive uh, receiver court, Terry Murphy is their best receiver. Latif Grimm with 54 catches. The team leader had a concussion last week and will not play tonight. Andrew Briscow, the center, is their best offensive lineman. Justin Wade starts in place of Ethan Weidel. So Pittsburgh a little bit banged up on the offensive side of the football. Second and 10, three wide receivers in the formation. Williams, the lone running back. Williams has the football, stumbles and into the arms of Damian Lewis, who drops him after a gain of about a yard. Yeah, Damian Lewis, Frank, did a great job coming off the football. Miami's defense will line up this way. Derek Ham coming off uh, three consecutive multiple sack games, so he is really coming into his own as a senior. Shevin Marshall, the true freshman, gets the start in place of Nate Webster, who is suffering from turf toe and they'd like to hold him out the whole night if they can. Edward Reed has become the Canes' best playmaker in the defensive secondary, the freshman from Louisiana. Third and nine for the Hurricanes, or for the Panthers, rather, as they go with the three wide out set. Lytle's first pass. Near sideline, and it's complete to a Miami coach. Incomplete as far as Pittsburgh is concerned. Penalty flag is down. A late flag coming from the field judge all the way in the Miami secondary. Might be some contact and forcing him out of bounds. It's defensive holding. That ball wasn't catchable anyway, Frank. It was it was way behind it, but I think they, the contact was right about the 30-yard line with number 27, Marquise Fitzgerald. We're in a play, the fourth pass, the Foster's line of scrimmage, 10 yards, automatic first down. So it is an automatic first down after the 10-yard holding penalty. Butch Davis saying, who was it on? 27, coach. That's what they're saying, at least. Uh, down on the football field. There's some contact right off the ball. Uh, Miami in great position on a third down for a stop to go three plays and out, but a penalty hurts him early. Chris Schneider and Brandon Williams in the eye behind Matt Lytle. First and 10, Panthers after the penalty on Miami. Lytle still has the football, good protection. Throwing deep down the middle and rather down the sideline, incomplete overthrowing RJ English at the Miami 40 yard line. Leonard Myers and Edward Reed on the coverage of R.J. English starting in place of Latif Grimm. Grimm with 54 catches, but uh, suffered a concussion last week in the loss to Boston College. And uh, not only, not the only former Pittsburgh quarterback, <laughs> John Congemi in attendance tonight. Of course, the Dolphins, Dan Marino. Yeah, talked to him before the game. He looks good. He, he gains down to about 215, I think, Frank. Second and 10, Lytle on the half roll. Complete to English on the outside. Gets away from Leonard Myers, but then Al Blades drives him out of bounds at about the 34-yard line, a minimal gain of about four. It'll bring up third and six. R.J. English is going to have to get a, a work in early in this football game, replacing Latif Grimm. Grimm, 54 catches Grimm had on the season coming in. R.J. English only had nine. There you see him matched up against Al Blades on the outside. Just a little turnout route, and number 22, Leonard Myers misses the tackle, but then the sure-handed and, and big hitter from the middle of the football field, Al Blades comes in to finish him off. Third and six for Pittsburgh. It's Julius Dixon in motion. Lytle, straight drop. Down the middle, incomplete. 
intended for Juan Williams, the tight end, and he took a vicious hit from Edward Reed on the end of that play. Yeah, just a bad read down the football field. He had who he wanted, Julius Dixon, underneath. He elected to go down to Williams. You'll see the back, number six, the wide receiver, creep out of the football field right there. He was wide open to dump the football off. Instead, Lytle tries to force it down the field. A lot of green jerseys in that Miami secondary. Greg DeBolt on to punt with Santana Moss back to receive the kick for the first time this year on a punt return. Moss takes it on the run at the 25. And Stutter steps up to the 30 before he is driven out of bounds. Big hit on the special teams from Chris Schneider, number 32, along with Kareem Thompson, 22. A 40-yard punt for DeBolt, and the Hurricanes will take over first and 10 at their 30-yard line. There is Scott Covington, the senior quarterback from Laguna Nigel, California. 6'2", 220, completing 58% of his passes. A 15 to 5 touchdown to interception ratio. But coming off his uh, poorest outing of the year, 9 for 19 against Temple with two interceptions, no touchdowns last week. But he said during the week, I'm not really concerned about it. I know what I can do. I know what this offense can do. And, of course, the running game was uh, outstanding last week. First offensive play to give to Edger and James on the stretch play. Not much there. James will squeeze a yard or two out of it. Damon Gibson, along with Ryan Gonzalez, making the tackle for the Pittsburgh defense. Here's a look at the Hurricane offense. Will McPartland getting his first career start in place of the injured Nick Williams, broke a finger against Temple. Daniel Franks coming off his best game of the season, a four-catch outing, including a touchdown against the Owls last week. And the offensive line, Robert Hall, after starting the year on a two-game suspension, has come on to really solidify that left tackle position. Second and eight for the Hurricanes. We'll check the pit defense after this play. Covington faking to James on the rollout. Covington all the way back across to a wide open James at the 50. Edger and James with some room and blocking downfield. James He's gets away go. and he may go to the house. One man cannot get him. Edger and James with a 68 yard touchdown and the Hurricanes are on the board. Well just as the Miami Hurricanes did last season against Pittsburgh, this year they score on the second play of their possession in their opening drive. Last year it was the third possession. Edger and James, no one to be found in a white jersey for the University of Pittsburgh. Great play fake by Scott Covington. It looked like he wanted to go to the twin receivers to the wide side of the field. I think this is an ad lib by Edron James. He carries it out. Just a great play by Covington, finding him from the middle of the football field. Now Edron has to make one man miss about the 30 yard line. A great Blake a block down the field by number 87, Reggie Wayne, springs him into the end zone. On the extra point, Popovich holding for Andy Crossland, who knocks it up and through. And the Miami Hurricanes have jumped out to a 7-0 lead, 12-18. Left to go in the first quarter as Scott Covington connects with Edger and James, a 68-yard touchdown play. It's Miami 7, Pittsburgh nothing. Right back at the Orange Bowl after this. 12-18, left to go first quarter. Miami with a quick 7-0 lead over the Pittsburgh Panthers. John, deja vu all over again. You mentioned it three plays into the game last year. Miami led 7-0 on a touchdown pass to a running back. In that case, it was Carlo Joseph. This time, it's Edger and James. Yeah, just a great design. And I'm not sure, Larry Coker, you, I'm patting you on the back for this one because Scott Covington is excited about the way he was able to go outside and find his tailback after the play fake. And you can see the Miami Hurricanes getting right into it, getting uh, right back where they left off against Temple and BC and West Virginia, doing a great job. Two plays covering 70 yards, only taking 52 seconds. That's been a trademark of Miami teams scoring so quickly. They do a great job of containing the ball and making it, making the opposing defenses pay. I believe it's a, their average, average scoring drive now is 151. That'll come down a little bit more, but Butch Davis and staff has to be happy the way this starts out. Well, he was happy last year the way it started out. We'll see if the Hurricanes can sustain something they were unable to do on a Thursday night in Pittsburgh last year in a game which cost them dearly. When you look at the final analysis, uh, five and six as opposed to six and five, and Pittsburgh wound up getting a bull bit at six and five last year before losing. And you see the career touchdowns for Edger and James now up to 25. That, by the way, was his, uh, let's see, he had 11 rushing and one receiving coming in, so that is his 13th touchdown of the season. And he has tied the, he is a co holder of the season record at 14. Short kick taken by RJ English, who pops through to the 33 yard line. And finally down there as the Hurricanes swarm him on special teams, Mike Rump and Al Blades, both in on the tackle for the Hurricanes. Pittsburgh will start first and 10 from their 33. Edger and James 
a co-holder of the season touchdown record. I want to clarify that with 14. And he is one shy of that with uh, still two games and three quarters plus to go he in this 1998 tonight. season. Yeah, there's a good shot. Andrew James is going to get the football tonight and probably wear down this Pittsburgh defense. From the 33-yard line, Pittsburgh with the twin receivers to the top of the screen. To give the Kevin Barlow in now at tailback, and Barlow gets up across the 35, close to the 39-yard line. Dan Morgan playing with a cast on the left hand. He broke a thumb a couple of weeks ago, then cut his hand deeply, worth six stitches up at Temple last week. So his left hand is pretty well bandaged up. Tough young man right there. A lot of these guys on the Miami defense, you have to be tough to play this game, but you're looking at 11 guys in green jerseys, especially Dan Morgan right there, playing through some bumps and bruises, but they're giving it, you know, 110. From the 39, second and four. Lytle, nowhere to go with the football in the air, has to run out of the pocket, and Michael Lawson drops him just past the line of scrimmage. So it will not be a sack, but nonetheless a good play for Michael Lawson. Michael Lawson has come on in recent weeks. I thought he's done a great job pressuring the quarterback. He has four pressures on the season, and he also has four sacks on the season. He's done a great job stopping the run. Miami trying to come up big on third and four. 11-12 left to go first quarter. Miami with a quick touchdown. A 60-yard pass from Covington to James has them up 7 to nothing. You see Pittsburgh's third down conversion rate on the season. Julius Dixon in motion. Lytle with the pocket collapsing to the sideline, complete to Terry Murphy, and he made the catch at the Miami 45-yard line. Marquise Fitzgerald drove him out of bounds there, but that is a Pittsburgh first down. Yeah, it was a good sign for Pitt fans if you're watching that Matt Lytle steps up into the pocket and delivers a strike to the outside. That's something that this offensive line hasn't allowed him to do. The protection has been uh, not so good over the season. I think the Pitt Panthers are the highest sack rated uh, team in the in the conference but a nice shot outside to number 81 Murphy and it's good for a first down 16 yards on the completion first down in Miami territory at the 45 Pittsburgh has surrendered 35 sacks to be exact Kevin Barlow the tailback and Miami jumps across they're claiming that Briscoe simulated the snap the center and we'll see how the officials saw it don't you love everybody starts pointing and it doesn't really matter until the, the man in the white hat speaks. John Smith Jr. Dead ball, offsides, It'll cost defense, Miami five. Five yard penalty remains first down. So it'll be first and five from the Miami 40. Let's see if we can pick it up. Yeah, right over the nose of the football, you see Michael Lawson, and that's something that, that's taught the center and quarterback. You snap the football as soon as you feel contact, that way you ensure the five yard penalty. First and five for Pittsburgh, 10.50 left to go first quarter. Double tight end now for the Panthers with Barlow, the lone running back. That's Barlow with the football. Gets about two, Al Blades and Shevin Marshall combining on the tackle for the Hurricanes. Adrian Wilson, number 96 now in there at defensive tackle, also getting a piece of it. It'll be a second and three upcoming for Pittsburgh. You look yeah. at Al Blades, yeah. the sophomore out of Plantation High School. Very active, Frank, from that secondary. He's been in on a lot of tackles, 52 total tackles to be exact. He has one pick on the season, but he does a nice job closing the cushion. He came free off of the corner, right off the double tight end set. Did a nice job preventing a, a, a bigger run on that play. Second and three. Delay handoff, Barlow. Striving for the first down. He's going to be close at the Miami 35-yard line. Dan Morgan leading the pack of tacklers for the Hurricanes. And it'll depend on the spot as to whether the Panthers have picked up the first down. Again, Miami playing without their middle linebacker, Nate Webster, 112 tackles this year, 10 for loss, including three sacks, but struggling with a turf toe injury. And Shevin Marshall, number 41, a true freshman from South Dade High School, is getting his first collegiate start. They will measure for the first down. And you see just a little bit less than the length of the football short. It will bring up a third down and that much. Well, the reason why he's short is Chris Viola tries to block Dan Morgan, but you see him right at the 40, really stuffs the fullback from the University of Pittsburgh, and Morgan was relentless in, in fighting and keeping him from reaching the 40, or actually the 35-yard line. Dish did a great job of keeping and holding his ground. Even he, he has problems grabbing with that left hand, but did a nice job on that second down. Third down and about the length of the football from the Miami 35. Chris Viola, the fullback. Kevin Barlow, the tailback. Now, Lytle's a big quarterback. He just may decide to take this on his own. 
He does. And Fiola, the fullback, <laughs> pushes him forward for the first down. I'm not sure if he gets the first down if it's not by the aid of Chris Fiola, number 38. That's a good job. He pulls his quarterback up and says, hey, I'll help you out anytime I can. Gain was uh, a yard to the Miami 39. Good enough for a Pittsburgh first down. Yeah, that deserves a shot of water. That's a good job on, a, on the fullback's part. I, I remember a lot of hands pushing me in the backfield. So get it, get it going, quarterback. It's a good thing he's wearing a flak jacket as a quarterback because right. Fiola gave a pretty behind. good shot. Again, two tight ends and a double wide out to the right side of the formation. Barlow, the only running back on first and 10 for Pittsburgh. Fake to Barlow. Lytle moving up in the pocket. Throwing toward the end zone and overthrows R.J. English with Leonard Myers in pretty good coverage for the Hurricanes. Yeah, the ball was thrown up the football field and it looked like R.J. English, if the ball would led him to the corner or to the pylon, might have had a shot at that, but it was nice coverage on the outside by the Hurricanes secondary. Second and 10, upcoming for Pittsburgh as we take an ISO on R.J. English from Waterford, Pennsylvania. Watch if this football is thrown to his left, to R.J.'s left. See, Leonard Myers is beaten early, but he's able to catch up, and the ball actually is overthrown. If that football is out over the middle of the field, he may have a shot. Three wide receivers in the game for the Panthers. Lytle passes too, too far and out of bounds, going for R.J. English. And that'll bring up third and long for Miami. Leonard Myers again with the coverage, the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. And Matt Lytle's glad he threw that football away because Leonard Myers had an excellent break on the football. If that was lower, that's a pick for a touchdown for Miami. Watch the great anticipation by Myers. He's in the middle, right in the throwing lane. If that ball's a little bit lower into the inside, there's a chance that Leonard Myers goes to the house. Ninth play of this drive, Pittsburgh three of four on third down conversion so far in the football game. 9.26 to go first quarter. Lytle stumbles as he came away from center on the rollout. Throwing, ball is tipped and that's gonna be intercepted by Delvin Brown. Delvin Brown has his first collegiate interception brought down at the Miami 18 yard line. There's the tip drill working to perfection. Number 24, Delvin Brown is the recipient of that gift coming down from the clouds. Just a nice job on the outside by the Miami secondary. They have been all over the pit offensive receivers today. There's a big crowd of, of green jerseys right in the middle of the football field there. You see it, a nice job of getting, being alert, being in the right place at the right time. And that's uh, Delvin Brown with the interception. One more look at it and Leonard Myers got hurt on the play. He took a shot from his own guy, Edward Reed, as Delvin Brown comes up with his first collegiate interception. And Leonard Myers, they're looking at the left shoulder. He took a pretty good shot from his own guy, Edward Reed, as they were both closing on the football. Yeah, everybody was closing to the football. It looked like Al Blades got a, a piece of the football that made it go up initially. But you got to worry about that. You have so many aggressive players on that defensive secondary and linebackers. There's so much speed on defense that when they see the football, everybody's swarming to the football, and you love that. You just want to try to stay out of everybody's way in the same color jersey. Uh, Leonard Myers is up and jogging off as they were looking at the right shoulder. And he and Edward Reed had a pretty fierce collision. He said, hey, man, he said, hey, I'm wearing the same color jersey. <laughs> Ed, give me a break. He, this is right shoulder, it looks like, and may have been pinned back when he was going up to get the football. But Ed Reed had a full head of steam going right at number 22, Leonard Myers. See Dr. John Uribe and Scott McGonigal looking over Leonard Myers. There's a timeout on the field. 9.16 to go first quarter. It's the Hurricane 7, the Panthers nothing. We'll be right back on Sports Channel. With Back at the Orange Bowl, Hurricanes following the turnover to give to Edger and James, and he will get only about a yard as the Pittsburgh defense swarming on Edger and James. Led by number 39, Nick Cole, freshman from Brooklyn, Ohio. See the Hurricanes with 14 turnovers forced by the defense. They've converted on 10 of those, nine for touchdowns. So it's a pretty good ratio. Yeah, they've turned it into 65 points. That's a nice job of, of taking advantage of what the defense is presenting you as an offensive team and making them pay. Officially a gain of two for James up to the 19 yard line. And that'll be an illegal substitution on Miami. They broke the huddle with 12 players. Mondrell Fulcher, the extra tight end was in the huddle and nobody had come off previously. Illegal substitution on the offensive team. Breaking the huddle with 12 men. Five yard penalty remains second down. So it'll be second and 13 instead of second and eight. As Miami was confused on the personnel packages, uh, tight end coach Rob Chudzinski, the guy, you're looking at the back of his head, Butch Davis, he's in right there next somewhere. to Butch Davis. That's right. Chud's usually responsible for getting the personnel packages into the game. But there was some confusion there. 
Will McPartland, the fullback, in motion. Covington on the rollout. Covington pumping and going deep for Santana Moss. Jump ball, tipped and incomplete. DJ Dinkins, the safety, got back there to get a hand up on the football as Santana had his man beaten deep, but Scott just couldn't get enough on the pass. Well, I think Scott was searching for someone to get the football to, and I think he came up with Santana a little bit later than he wanted to because that was about a 60 or 65 yard throw. If he throws the ball now when they're even, he's leaving and you can you can make an easy score. But there you see Santana Moss trying to prevent the interception coming back. If the ball's thrown earlier, Frank, as you said, it's an easy six points. Third and long, Hurricanes have to get up to their 27 or eight yard line to get a first down. Covington on the roll. Now under pressure and down he goes. Pete Simonian, number 41, making the sack back at the two yard line. That's good coverage by Pittsburgh, and Scott had nowhere to go with the football. Yeah, pressure from the corner. Pete Simonian, as you said, Frank, for the Panthers coming off the edge, did a nice job of staying in his lane. He's to the left side of your screen, coming up the football field. Covington's actually going to feel pressure from the inside of number 45, one, uh, Julian Graham, and he runs right into number 41, Simone. Andy Crossland standing at the rear of the end zone. Hank Poteet back to receive the kick. There's the kick from Crossland. He booms a nice one out. Poteet forced back into his own territory. Poteet at the 50, and right into the arms of Pat Del Vecchio, the long snapper, number 69, from Westminster Christian High School here in Miami, who makes the special teams tackle. 7.35 left to go first quarter. It's Miami 7, Pittsburgh nothing. We'll be right back here on Sports Channel. Join Sports Channel Florida every Saturday morning at 11.30 a.m. for the Butch Davis Show. The Hurricanes head coach will give you 30 minutes of hard-hitting highlights and behind-the-scenes action. It's all right here on Sports Channel Florida, the Butch Davis Show, hosted by... Yours truly, Frank Ford. John, right on cue as always. Frank, this is a, a type of a game that Miami really needs to concentrate early and, and keep up their aggressiveness. They give the Pitt Panthers the ball right around midfield at their own 48-yard line. So right now the defense has to come out and really, really pay attention to detail and stop, stop Pitt right now. Third possession of the game for the Panthers from the Miami 48. The late give to Barlow. Barlow to the 45. Dan Morgan making the first contact for the Hurricane defense. They'll bring up about a second and seven. Damian Lewis also helping out on the tackle. Good look at Dan Morgan, the sophomore out of Coral Springs, the leading tackler not only on the Hurricanes, but in the entire Big East Conference. 120 total tackles coming into the game, nine for loss, couple of sacks, two fumble recoveries, and a pass breakup. Yeah, this is really the first game he's playing without his partner on the inside, too. Nate Wetzer, they're a great one-two punch. Second down and seven for Pittsburgh from the Miami 45. Fake delay, Lytle. Deep down the sideline, going for Murphy, and whoa, catch. what a catch. Marquise Fitzgerald was draped all over Terry Murphy, and he still made the catch at the Miami 14. Murphy actually looked like he leaped a little bit too early, Frank. I thought the ball was going to go over his head. Lytle puts it close. It was great coverage on the outside, but take a look at this. The left hand goes up. It looks like he just floats like Michael Jordan a little bit up in the air and brings it down. Just great concentration. It was excellent coverage by Fitzgerald on the outside, but an even better catch by Terry Murphy. A gain of 31. First down and 10 for the Panthers. Lytle on an option. Tripped up and falls forward to the 11-yard line. Shevin Marshall tripped him up. It's a gain of three with 6.26 left to go in the first quarter, and Miami with a 7-0 lead over Pittsburgh. Looks like Pittsburgh on offense. They'll give you a little bit of everything. Four wide, three wide. They're going to run the option. They'll go eye backs. A lot to prepare, prepare for as a defense. And it, uh, Walt Harris, he's a great offensive mind and a great offensive coach, very patient on the sidelines. So we'll see what they do on second down. Second and seven from just inside the 11 yard line. Lytle, three step drop. Pass outside to Murphy, incomplete. Fitzgerald had the coverage. Yeah, the pass was inside. Terry Murphy did a nice job on the quick hitch route. If Lytle puts the ball on the outside shoulder, it's a completion, but Fitzgerald was right there on the inside. Take a look where this ball position is. He's wide open to the outside. If it goes to his left shoulder, he makes the catch, but actually the ball's thrown to his upfield shoulder where it shouldn't be, and it results as an incompletion. Look at Terry Murphy, who transferred from a California junior college last year to Pittsburgh, and you see he's signaling a timeout as Pittsburgh had some confusion as to which offensive personnel group they wanted on the field. Walt Harris, last year's Big East Coach of the Year, 
And you see him reading well, a riot act to one of his players. He said, hey, you can't supposed cost to us go a timeout. That's right. Tim Stein, the wide receiver, was the uh, young man he was uh, yelling at as Matt Lytle comes over to discuss things. Hurricanes with the 7-0 lead. It occurred on their second offensive play after they had stopped Pittsburgh's first offensive possession. And you see, uh, my partner was no slouch. Single season passing yards, the eighth and ninth best seasons in Pittsburgh history for my partner, John Congemi. Yeah, there's a, probably from about three or four to six or seven, there's a guy named Dan Reno somewhere filtered in there. But yeah, I, I did throw a couple passes. There you go, all-time passing yardage leader. John Congemi, number three. Alex Van Pelt, Dan Marino, and John Congemi. All right. See? And he was, really he hasn't, was there. He hasn't been lying to us all these years. <laughs> Boy, the stories get better, though, Frank. Oh, they do. I thought I threw for 16,000. <laughs> you know, the other thing we were discussing before the game is the total offense. And the total offensive number is 116 yards less than the passing number because you had a minus yeah. 116 rush. I was going backwards more than I was going forwards <laughs> when I had it underneath my arm. Well, that was all those kneel downs at the end of that's games right, when you were right. winning, right? We're clearly ahead, <laughs> the three-yard kneel downs. Third and six for Pittsburgh. They put five wide receivers in the formation. Right, watch for the quarterback draw. Lytle wants to throw, does, over the middle, touchdown. It goes to number 86, the wide receiver, R.J. English. That is an 11-yard touchdown pass just past the outstretched arm of Dan Morgan. We talked about R.J. English and what he needed to do to replace Latif Grimm. He's come up big, and it, Lytle has really looked to him for big plays in this first quarter. He's done a nice job of spreading the football out, and we mentioned it. This pit offense is going to use multiple formations. It's going to make Miami cover down as much as it can, and that time it pays off for the Panthers. So Pittsburgh attempts to tie it up. Nick Lotz, the freshman kicker, has won the job from Chris Forensic. He kicks it up, and it is good. And with five minutes and 51 seconds left to go in the first quarter, we're all tied up at 7-7. Initially, I thought Dan Morgan, you see him right about the five-yard line, 44, was going to be able to make this play because the ball was late. But a nice job, and he just misses with that left hand. I think maybe that left hand, he was almost uh, wanted to get it in there but didn't want to because that's where the injury occurred. And you've got a, a, a cast on that hand. you got an injured hand, and Lytle throws the ball. He threw a bullet in the middle of the football field, just missing Dan Morgan's arm, but it results in a Pittsburgh touchdown in a tied football game. Five plays, they moved at 48 yards in a minute and 45 seconds. A 10 yard touchdown pass from that man, Matt Lytle to RJ English. So Pittsburgh riding the early punch as they did a year ago. Yeah, this, from the Hurricanes. this game really going the way it did a year ago. Miami really coming out, scoring on the third play of the football game. This year on the second play, and you see Dan Morgan there on the sideline and a very happy wide receiver, R.J. English. Five plays, 48 yards, in a minute, 45 seconds. English catches the 10-yard touchdown. So now it's up to the Miami offense to respond as James Jackson and Najee Davenport will go back to receive the kickoff from Nick Lotz. This Pittsburgh team does throw the ball pretty well. They've struggled in the running game this year, but their passing game is good. It's a short kick. Jackson at the 10. Jackson trying to pick a hole, gets up across the 25-yard line, and we'll get to the 26, and that's where the Hurricanes will start first and 10. Trey McRae, number 50, making the special teams tackle for Pittsburgh. As you look at James Jackson, the sophomore from Bell Glade, it's kind of the Hurricanes change-up running back. Once you get pounded by Edger and James, they throw James Jackson in there, and he is the speed merchant. He's a lightning bolt. I tell you, he's a great change-up to come into the football game. He brings great speed to the outside and can change the complexion of a game with one carry. First down and 10, Hurricanes at the 26. Pittsburgh has tied it up 7-7, 5.41 to go first quarter. Will McPartland and Edger and James, the running backs. Santana Moss in motion. Get to James, trying to pick his way through, spins up to close to the 30-yard line. Seth Hornack, number 26 on the tackle, along with Damon Gibson. Gain is close to four. It'll bring up second and six for take, the Hurricanes. You take a look at Seth. He leads the team in total tackles with 75 out of that strong safety position. Does a nice job for the Panthers filling the hole that time and really limiting Edron James. It looked like it was going to be a bigger run than four yards. Well, Pittsburgh's two leading tacklers are their safeties, and that's, that's not, not usually a good sign. That's not a good sign. Blitz coming. 
Hurricanes pick it up. Covington. Great route. Going to the outside to Reggie Wayne at the 50, and he steps out of bounds in Pittsburgh territory at the 49-yard line. Trey Creighton had the coverage, but that is a Hurricane first down. Yeah. Pick Trey up of Creighton. 21. Trey Creighton saying to uh, on the outside to Reggie Wayne, just stay still for a minute so I can see what you look like. Watch this move to the outside and just leaves Trey to the inside. Great route runner. All these Miami Hurricane wide receivers get in and out of their breaks with great speed. And that time he was wide open with separation coming out of the inside corner. Changes for the Hurricanes. Andre King and Daryl Jones in at wide receiver. Mondro Fulcher in at tight end. First down from the Pittsburgh 39. Double tight end for Miami. They give to James. Edger following Martin Bibla, who's in the game at right guard, and he gets down to the Pittsburgh 43-yard line. Kenny Pegram and Nick Cole making the tackle for the Pittsburgh defense with 4.48 to go first quarter. It's a 7-7 ball game. I think that's the kind of play Miami really likes on first down, to really get in tight, run the short side of the football field, and then pound it for five or six yards. Take a look at the right guard and right tackle doing a nice job. You mentioned number 65, Martin Bibla, coming in from that guard position, getting outside and providing some running room for Edger and James. Edger and creeping closer to the 1,000-yard mark. You see what he did last week against Temple. In second and six, it's James. Through to the 40-yard line and powers across the 40. DJ Dinkins, the safety, making the tackle for Pittsburgh. It's about a yard and a half shy of the first down. It'll bring up third and short for Miami. Another Edger, look at Edger and James. Yeah, does a nice job getting in the middle of that football field. A little running room to the inside. Dinkins comes up. We mentioned these safeties are one and two. The strong safety, Hornack, number one, and DJ Dinkins. He's number two with total tackles at 62. Third down and a long yard for Miami. They have to get it about midway between the Pittsburgh 39 and 38 yard lines. Montreal Fulcher to tight end in motion. James, after a good block from McCartland, he'll have the first down. Ryan Gonzalez making the tackle as McPartland did his job and gave Edger in just enough room to pick up three yards and a first down. Early in this game, Frank, this is a very physical football game. Both teams really coming out and laying it on the line. Take a look right there. Seth Hornick meets number 35, Will McPartland, in the backfield. McPartland does a great job of just getting to a stalemate and letting his running back, Edger James, pick a side. He picks the right side and goes for a first down. First and 10 from the Pittsburgh 37, 325 to go first quarter. Fulcher now lined up in the backfield as an H-back. Covington will put it up. Over the middle and nearly intercepted by Dinkins as the pass was intended for Bubba Franks, the tight end. Yeah, a little bit different formation by the Miami Hurricanes. Number 18, Mondrell Fulcher going to the wide side of the football field out of the running back spot, but the ball looked like it was delivered just a touch behind Bubba Franks. He was running an option route down the middle of the football field, looked like on DJ Dinkins. He breaks to the inside and Scott just throws the ball behind him. Luckily, that wasn't picked off. And Scott did not look real sharp last week at Temple and is off to a mediocre start today despite the touchdown pass to James. Second and 10. Good to Edwin James. James across the 35 and down close to the 30 yard line. Kareem Thompson, the outside linebacker, number 22 out of Roanoke, Virginia, making the tackle. But Edgerin did pick up seven. It'll bring up third and three. He's just a workhorse, Frank. The more you feed him, it looks like the more effective he gets and the more dominant and the more people that he carries through the initial hit. He's just a very low to the ground, a very strong runner below the waist. And take a look right there. He even runs into his own player, Robert Hall, and actually bounced him through the hole and brings up a third and short. Three wideouts in the formation for the Hurricanes. Pittsburgh showing blitz. They come two from the outside, looking pattern complete to Wayne, what a move. Reggie at the 15. Wayne diving toward the end zone, it'll be down at the two yard line. Hank Poteet and DJ Dinkins saved the touchdown for the time being, but Reggie Wayne made quite a move. Yeah, the pirouette on the quick slant, just a lot of pressure by the Pitt defense. They gamble and roll the dice, but Miami had the perfect play called. You beat the cornerback on the outside, Trey Clayton and watch this move right on a dime right there at about the 24 yard line. Reggie Wayne just shows his great athleticism to the outside and gets it inside the five yard line down to the two. Gain was 28 yards, brings up a first and goal from the Pittsburgh two yard line. 2.17 to go first quarter. Fulcher the tight end in motion. Everybody packed in tight for the Canes. James following the Cartland and no gain. Pittsburgh's defense coming up to swarm him. 92, Marlon Young along with Amir Purifoy. The backup outside linebacker, Marlon Young out of Miami Senior High School playing in front of his hometown fans. 
second and goal for the Hurricanes. Purifoy did a great job filling that hole. That looks like that's a typical run that Edron James usually makes the first person miss and gets one or two yards, but that time Purifoy did a nice job for the Panther defense. Tenth play of the drive, which started back at the Miami 26. Again, everybody in tight on the formation. Fulcher again in motion. Trap play up the middle. James to the goal line, and they mark him down just shy. His head got in the end zone, the football didn't. Yeah, the head and shoulders looked like it broke the plane of the goal line, but the ball was around his belly button, never got it across the plane of the goal line. He was trying to go to the outside and didn't follow Richard Mercy. He decided he saw daylight and thought he could beat the Pitt Panthers right at Ryan Gonzalez, the middle linebacker, but Pitt did a nice job of stuffing Edrin right at the goal line, and that'll bring up a third and goal, probably at about the one foot line. 11th play of the drive too, Frank. Again, everybody in tight. Covington takes it on the sneak, and he didn't get it. They marked him short. Uh, John, I'm just not sure why you would run a quarterback sneak when you've got a running back like Edger and James. Well, we're going to see what Butch Davis is going to do on fourth down. I think they're going to go for it, and I think you'll see number five, Edron James. They're going to roll the dice with the with the gal that brought him down to the one foot line, and that's Edron James. He's a a workhorse, especially in tight. I like him going off the uh, off the right side. Fourth and goal for the Hurricanes. Fulcher in motion. It's James. James touchdown. Edger and James with his second touchdown of the night. It comes on a fourth and goal play with 14 seconds to go in the first quarter. That's more of what you're used to, seeing Edger and James carry one and two players at least two or three yards down the football field, especially when he has a, a head of steam. Take a look at this Miami offensive line. They give him the crease he needs to get in. Damon Neely does a nice job at the point of attack, but Robert Hall and Richard Mercier and Ty Wise on that left side do a terrific job of creating that stalemate, giving him the crease to get into the end zone. Pat Del Vecchio will snap, Popovich to hold, Andy Crossland's kick is through, and good. So with 14 seconds left to go in the first quarter, it's Miami 14 and Pittsburgh 7. John, a 12-play, 74-yard drive, and it consumed 5 minutes and 37 seconds, so just what the doctor ordered for Butch Davis's offense. Yeah, out of the norm, Miami really takes the football and keeps it and really makes Pittsburgh pay by scoring a touchdown. Miami gambles on fourth down, really wasn't a gamble. You're gonna go for it there anyway because you have a big back in Edron James and a confidence in that young offensive line who's been really handling the Pitt Panther defensive line up front. So Miami regains the lead at 14 to seven with a nice drive keyed by the running of Edron James and two uh, passes to Reggie Wayne totaling 21 and 28 yards. And there is a look at Edger and James, the junior from Immokalee, Florida. Coaches felt he was special from the very day he walked on campus, and he has turned out to be just that. You know, barring something catastrophic, he will go. You see uh, his numbers on the drive, eight carries for 25 yards. Barring something catastrophic, he's on his way to his second consecutive 1,000-yard season. As we mentioned in the open, he'd be the first hurricane in history to have back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons and the first back to have multiple 1,000-yard seasons. We kind of caught fire, Frank, at that West Virginia game. I thought that was shades of what we saw last season. He really didn't do that up to that point, but now he's, he's just turned the engine on and he's on post because he's making people pay when he puts his head down and he's, he's doing it aggr with aggressive running. Seavers kickoff, mishandled, picked up by Poteet at the 10. Poteet got away from one man. Trying to pick his way through, and Chris Campbell makes the tackle at the 26-yard line. R.J. English tried to handle that line drive kickoff. It got away from him, but Poti did make something positive happen as he returns it back up to the 26-yard line. That's where the Panthers will start first and 10. Hank Poti out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. One of the Panthers' more productive players in this 2-7 and seven season. And with four seconds left to go in the first quarter, Matt Lytle will bring the Panthers up to the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers in the game. Kevin Barlow is the running back. Barlow with the football. Finds a bit of a hole and gets out to the 29-yard line. Nate Webster, who is in the ball game despite that turf toe, makes the tackle after a pickup of three, and that will be the end of the first quarter. First quarter in the books here at the Orange Bowl. And after one period, it's Miami 14, the Pittsburgh Panthers 7. We'll be right back with more action here on Sports Channel right after this.
Start of the second quarter here at the Orange Bowl. Miami with a 14-7 lead over Pittsburgh, and you see the numbers from the first quarter. Miami with 146 total yards to 84 for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh with the only turnover. Miami guilty of the only penalties called during that first 15 minutes of play. Nate Webster remains in at middle linebacker. He made the tackle on the last play of the first quarter. Dan Morgan out of the ball game right now, and Rod Mack, number 51, in at the weak side linebacker. Second and seven for the Panthers. Barlow in motion. Lytle will throw. Three-step drop and passes dropped by R.J. English at the 40-yard line. I don't really know how much R.J. wanted that football because it looked like he was going to take a pounding once he crossed the hash and made a couple nice catches earlier, but that's a tough catch you need to make, especially if, if you're struggling on offense. Third and seven upcoming for Pittsburgh. Hurricanes go with the nickel package on defense. Pittsburgh with three wide receivers in the game. Fiola, the fullback, is the only running back. Lytle, looking for the quarterback draw, has some room. Lytle brought down by Rod Mack at the 38-yard line, but that is a Pittsburgh first down. Nice call by the Pitt offense there on third down. Really spread the Miami defense out pretty thin. And then the quarterback draw. This is a big fella, too. 6'4", 225, a senior. He has three TDs rushing this season as long as 28, but does a nice move of eluding the pass rushers and then just moves to the outside, follows his block down the field of the fullback, Chris Viola, to get a couple extra yards and a pit first down. I thought there was a block in the back against Nate Webster, but it went uncalled. And it's a first down for Pittsburgh at their 39. Lytle faking the draw. Lytle under pressure, and down he goes. Derek Ham got there for the sack. Quincy Hips also got in there. And Ham made the first contact. We'll see if they share the sack or not in the stats, but it is a sack for the Miami defense, their first of the night. Well, that's what Bill Miller was sharing with you earlier, Frank. Mark Brown, the tackle for Pitt. Feel like the tackles are the weakness up front, the right side of your screen. You watch number 71, Derek Ham. He just dips that left shoulder under and then uses his speed to get up the field on the sack of Matt Lytle. Well, that is the best pass defense. The pressure on the quarterback, a loss of nearly 10. It'll bring up second and long for Pittsburgh. A look at Derek Ham, the senior out of Merritt Island. And it, that will be, he had 11 sacks coming in, so that'll be at least 11 and a half. And if they give him credit for the full sack, of course, 12. On second and long. Lytle, three-step drop. Look into Murphy, complete at the 40, and that's all. Rod Mack and Nate Brooks making the tackle. A penalty flag down on the far side of the field. If the play stands, it's a gain of about nine. Looks like it may go Pitt, yeah. Anytime that flag is, I thought it might be a, a legal formation, but Pitt was moving early. That was the same play they tried to get to R.J. English to the wide side of the field a couple plays ago. This time they go to a sure-handed Terry Murphy on the near side, and you see Walt Harris, the illegal Pittsburgh formation. head coach, on their sideline. It is indeed an illegal formation call against Pittsburgh. Not enough guys on the line of scrimmage. You need to have seven and they only had six. So Miami will accept the five yard penalty and will make it second and 25. Now the ball sitting back at the Pittsburgh 25 yard line. Let's see if uh, I do this at home a lot, trying to read lips on the sidelines. I would take a look at the halfback. I believe it's Brandon Williams in the football game. He may get the ball here. It's Barlow and Fiola in the backfield. That's, that's what you get for reading lips, John. Lytle stepping up in the pocket. Now he's gonna take off and run at the 30. Puts his head down and gets across the 35 yard line. So he picks up about 10 on the scramble, and it's still third and long. Matt Lytle does a nice job for a big quarterback, an athletic quarterback. He really can make plays with his legs as well. There you see him getting out of the pocket. He was flushed, really nothing down the football field. He takes that five-step drop, steps up through the middle, and then tucks it and run, tries to make the most out of a bad play, and really was productive on second down. Third and 13 for the Panthers. Standard pro set on third and long. Lytle, under pressure, got away from Ham. Throws it down the middle, complete to Julius Dixon out at midfield, and he should have enough for a Pittsburgh first down. As Lytle escaped the pressure, Rod Mack on the tackle for the Hurricanes, but Pittsburgh will move the chains with 12 and a half minutes to go second quarter. Dixon with a nice catch over the middle of the football field, but an even better escape. It looked like Ham had the quarterback for Pittsburgh, Lytle, right in his grasp, and he really ducked underneath 
both Miami defenders and then found a receiver, Dixon, down the middle of the football field. A nice throw on the run, a nice ad lib by Matt Lytle, and it, it found a way to his wide receiver, and it's good enough for a, a pit first down. There's the numbers on Lytle. First down at midfield for Pittsburgh. Gain of 14 on the last play. Barlow on the delay, cut down by Nate Webster after a gain of about a yard. Well, if Nate Webster's feeling pain in that toe, he's not showing it. I bet it was tough to keep him out of the starting lineup, let alone watching the first quarter go by and seeing Pitt score seven points. And in a very good, competitive and good, tough first quarter, Nate was on the sidelines probably chomping at the bit, waiting to get into this football game. Well, he went up to Bill Miller before the game and said, Coach, I'm ready. I want to play. And so far, the Hurricanes need him. It's a 14-7 game. Second and long for the Panthers. They motion to no backs. Lytle, quick drop, flips it off to Julius Dixon, who bobbled the football, and it's incomplete. He took a hit from Nate Webster. He was already bobbling the football, but Nate made sure he didn't catch it. Yeah, that's one of the things you don't want to do over the middle of the football field, especially with number 52 waiting to lead, light you up over the middle. Pretty good throw, just a real quick, he was uncovered. That's why he goes to him so quick on the pass, Lytle does, but one catch per throw, especially going over the middle. You don't want to bobble it a couple times. Watch Webster lock in and just zero in. What great closing speed and just a, a huge home run shot to the chin. Third and eight for Pittsburgh. Lytle will throw, being pressured. And he is going to go down. Ryan Stinson making the sack back at the Pittsburgh 35 yard line as Derek Ham would not allow Lytle to get outside and Stinson came from the backside and ran him down. Brian gets his first sack of the 98 season and Lytle trying to make a play. That time it was better off if he did throw the football away because the Miami Hurricanes, they were being held up front. Relentless pressure from that defensive front. Again, that is always the best pass defense being in the quarterback's face. DeBolt will kick. Almost blocked. Santana Moss at his 18. Moss falls as he tried to make a cut at the 24-yard line. It's a punt of 46 yards and a short uh, five-yard return for Santana Moss, the net of 41. There's 10 minutes and 41 seconds to go in the second quarter here at the Orange Bowl. It's Miami 14, Pittsburgh 7. The Hurricanes will have the football when we come back right here on Sports Channel. Arm strength, quickness, agility, and body control. The essential elements of the winning defensive baseball player. And with Coach Emanski's Defensive Drills video, you'll learn the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school. The Defensive Drills video features revolutionary training techniques developed by professional scout and instructor Tommy Nansky. Techniques that get results, producing baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams and even a gold medal in international competition. In a recent review, Collegiate Baseball Magazine exclaimed, with Coach Emanski's techniques, the future of baseball is here today. Even top professional players are impressed. Just ask Major League Superstar Fred McGriff. I'm so impressed with the instructional videos by Coach Emanski that I've given them my full endorsement. When you watch them, you'll know why. The Defensive Drills video is available now for immediate shipping. It makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order, call now, 1-800-888-1610. That's 1-800-888-1610. Call now. Welcome back to the Orange Bowl. The Hurricanes will close out the regular season on December 5th against third-ranked UCLA. Kickoff in the Orange Bowl will be 2 p.m. Great football, touchdown alley, family fun, and more, all at an affordable price. Call 305-284-CANES or 1-800-GO-CANES for tickets. And, of course, the game rescheduled because of Hurricane George. First and 10 Hurricanes from the 23-yard line. They lead it 14-7. We uh, have not been able to spot Dan Morgan, the Hurricane linebacker, on the sideline. He was not in on that last defensive series, and we haven't been able to find him on the sideline. And my suspicions are that uh, somehow he opened up that six-stitch cut that he suffered last week against Temple. Short side pitch to James Jackson. Jackson dodging around tacklers. Jackson at the 24, got back to the line of scrimmage and maybe got a yard. That was a heck of a run just to get back to where he started from. James Jackson coming into the football game for Edger and James. That little changeup that Miami likes to use. You see his yardage there. Very productive on an average. 7.2 yards every time he touches the football and five touchdowns. Did a nice job of almost eluding the Pitt defense, but Pitt had enough team speed to get to the ball carrier. That's one of those plays where you take your four yards and say, okay, let's line up and yeah. make it second and six. It's second and nine. 
after the one-yard gain. Delay give to Jackson. Again, dancing in the hole. This time, finds some space. Gets up to the 29-yard line, where he took a good hit from Seth Hornack, the safety. And D.J. Dinkins also in on the tackle. This uh, pit surprising me a little bit tonight, Frank. After losing back-to-back to, back to Temple and Rutgers and then B.C., I didn't think we'd, we'd see a lot of fight in this team tonight. And it looks like they're coming, and they're, they're playing with a lot of emotion. And I know it's a physical football game anytime you strap up the helmet and shoulder pads. But particularly tonight, I think the Miami offensive line and the pit defensive line really going after each other. Third and three for the Hurricanes. Jackson, the lone running back. Three wide receivers in for Miami. Andre King in motion. Three-step drop, look in pass, complete to Reggie Wayne, and he'll have a first down up to the 39-yard line. Hank Poteet, the cornerback, making the tackle, but that is a Miami first down, a pickup of nine on a third and three. A pass play, Frank, that Scott Covington has been able to hang his hat on so far. It's just a quick slant, a very easy throw down the inside. The pit cornerback's really playing off. You see Hank Poteet coming from the outside, a lot of room to cover, and it's a nice throw and a nice catch, great conversion on third down. Reggie Wayne, three catches for 58 yards. We get word that Dan Morgan is having his hand retaped, the cast retaped. You see Reggie Wayne's numbers on the season. Covington play faking on first down. Going deep down the left side, complete to Andre King, who steps out at the Pittsburgh 34 yard line. And that is a first down for Miami. Trey Creighton on the coverage, but a nice pitch and catch from Covington to Andre King. Looks like on the outside, that could be the weakness on the outside of the pit defense. The Miami wide receivers against the pit cornerbacks. Covington with all day to throw the football. Had a number of options. Elected not to go to Mondrell Fulcher because he had Andre King wide open down the pit sideline for a big play in a Miami first down. 27 yards on the completion to Andre King, the sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. And it's a Miami first down at the Pittsburgh. 34. Double tight end. And they run behind the double tights. This is James Jackson, and he's not going to get anything. In fact, he's going to lose a yard. Ryan Gonzalez there for the Pittsburgh defense, along with Marlon Young. So that way, that play, they motioned the, two, the second tight end to the strong side, but uh, Pittsburgh was waiting for it. Yeah, it looked like Pitt's doing a nice job of pursuing to the football, especially on first down. And there you see uh, Coach Junko for the University of Pittsburgh. He coached me. He was one of the only the remaining coaches there on the staff when I was there at the University of Pittsburgh. A nice, good linebacker, tough coach for the defensive side. Second and 11. And we have whistles. And there's no flags on the field that I can see. With the field judge coming in to discuss things with our referee, John Smith, Jr. Maybe something with the 25-second clock. Yeah, I didn't see anybody who wasn't really set to put it in play. Please reset the game clock to show 8.27. 8.22. 8.22. they'll reset the game clock. They'll put seven more seconds back on. Frank, you get the feeling that this Miami offense at will could really go to their wide receivers and, and throw it, but they want to kind of get a good mix of running and passing uh, established. And Butch Davis, knowing that he has a couple games that he must win, especially the next one, you know, obviously this one this evening, but against Syracuse, they're going to need that running game and to be aggressive up front. Yeah, no question about it. This game I liken to your setup man in baseball, the guy who pitches the eighth inning. That's right. If he doesn't do his job, you never get to your closer. Mm -hmm. They don't do their job tonight, then the Syracuse game is not for the conference championship, or at least the outright conference championship. Covington, pump faking. Now goes secondary over the middle, and that pass is tipped and intercepted by Hornack. Yeah, and Scott Covington laying on the Orange Bowl grass with his he helmet his off. Helmet. It looked like he was getting some pressure from the outside by number 41, Pete Simonian. Did a nice job of delivering the football. It was a pump and go to the outside, Frank. He wanted to go to his wide receiver. You see the pump and go right there, but elects not to pull the trigger. And then just an ill-advised pass. It looked like he just threw it off his back foot. I don't know if he was trying to throw the football away or force it down the middle of the field, but there was a lot of heat after he didn't throw to the outside receiver. A nice tip drill and ends up in Seth Hornack's hands. It looks like that'll be his fourth interception of the season. It is, and uh, as you said, an ill-advised throw by Covington, especially on, on a, a second and 11 in Pittsburgh territory. 8.06 to go second quarter. We'll take a timeout. It's Miami 14, Pittsburgh 7, right back on Sports Channel after this.
truck. The award, the new Chevy Silverado, the Motor Trend Truck of the Year. It's bigger, it's more powerful. It's the truck from Chevrolet. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by ESPN Regional solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of ESPN Regional or Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Frank Fort and John Kinjemi with you on Sports Channel. 8.06 to go second quarter. Miami holding a 14-7 lead following the Seth Hornack interception and really an, an ill-advised throw and a poor decision by Scott Covington on a second and 11 play, and it resulted in the turnover. Schneider and Barlow, the running backs behind Lytle. Barlow with the football. Barlow breaks through to the 20-yard line. Picks up six or seven before Damian Lewis makes the tackle for the Miami defense. A big difference on first down when you look at the offenses, the pit offense, it seems like they're able to get four and five yards on first down running the football. Miami has not been able to do that. Matt Lytle and offense and company have done a nice job spreading the Miami defense out. And it's, a, it's a tiring situation for this Miami defense. They're really not in an attack mode. And Butch Davis, you know, a little bit concerned about the way this game's going right now at 14 to seven. Second and four. Schneider, the fullback. And he moved the pile for a couple of yards. Again, Damian Lewis and Quincy Hips in on the tackle for Miami. And it'll bring up third and about two. Well, this would be a huge uh, situation for the Miami defense to respond after turning the football over on their offensive possession deep in pit territory to come out and go three plays and out and really stuff the Pittsburgh offense on third down right here in their initial possession after the turnover. Third and a little less than two, call it. Schneider and Barlow, the running backs behind Lytle. Miami blitzing. They pick it up. Lytle throws incomplete. Threw it behind Murphy. Nate Brooks had the coverage. So the Miami defense holds after the turnover. That's the second time the ball has been thrown on the inside when the wide receiver, Terry Murphy, is, is expecting the football on the outside. And that's a, a concern for your head coach. You want to deliver the football, make plays. It's, it's deadlock, man-to-man -man coverage. Just a lot of bumping and grinding going on the outside. But there was room enough to fit the football into the outside, and Matt Lytle didn't do it. Greg DeBolt to kick, Santana Moss to receive. DeBolt under no pressure. A short kick. Hits at the Miami 45 and rolls out of bounds right there. Well, that's where the Canes will take over first and 10 with 642 left to go in the second quarter. A kick of only 32 yards. Miami with good field position. We'll see if they can capitalize. We'll take a timeout. It's Miami 14, Pittsburgh 7, right back at the Orange Bowl after this. Basketball fans, it's not too late to order your season tickets now. The women's team has its home opener Tuesday against Coppin State and its Big East opener next Saturday. Both games at 7 p.m. at the Knight Sports Complex on campus. The men's team has its Big East opener December 8th against Boston College, 7.30 at the Miami Arena. Call 305-284-CANES or 1-800-GO-CANES for ticket information. College basketball right now, the only game in town with the NBA lockout, so good chance to see hoops at an affordable price as you look at the Miami defense. As they will rest on the sideline, the offense takes over first and 10 at the 45 of the Hurricanes. Miami up 14-7, a couple of touchdowns from Edger and James. One by way of run, one on the receiving end. The Scott Covington pass, and James will pick up only a yard on first down. Demond Gibson making the tackle along with Ryan Gonzalez. Might be a situation now on first down, Frank, to really play action and maybe throw the football down the field because... The Pitt Panther defense, and I don't have a stat, I'm just going off of my memory. They've been doing a pretty good job of stuffing the Miami running game, especially in, to the short side of the field where Miami has had most of their success this season running the football. Second and nine. Wayne and Moss to the top of the formation. Tight end Bubba Franks closest to the bottom of the screen. Covington on second and nine. Pass is almost intercepted, and it should have been by Gonzalez. Again, he was looking for Bubba Franks over the middle and threw it right at 55's numbers. Yeah, it looks like the hangover from Temple is really continuing, and Scott Covington not as sharp as he's been in previous weeks. This time he's trying to get the football to his tight end, but really didn't have a, a lot on the football, and Ryan Gonzalez really just drops the football. It looked like he was the intended receiver, trying to go to Bubba Franks over the middle, but just didn't get it. It didn't come off his hand properly, and, and I've been on the other end of that, and I know that he was trying to get it over the receiver and had plenty of room to do so, but just threw a bad ball. Now the officials again conferencing. 
and they say it was just something with the play clock. John, if, if you're Miami, though, I think you've got to be a little bit concerned at the way Covington has played last week and through the first quarter and a half of this game because his decision-making is not as sharp as it, is, as it was through the first seven games. I think the position on first down, they're putting him in a, a couple bad situations in long territory. On third down, Covington to Bubba Franks, the tight end, and he's in Pittsburgh territory at the 47-yard line. It's going to be about a yard short of a first down. And Butch Davis sends the punt team onto the field. Just really no rhythm, Frank. You can't get into a rhythm, and that's important for a quarterback, and that's been the easy part of this offense. Scott Covington making the plays on first down. You, you make the running plays. You make the conversions on third down. You get a little bit of a rhythm going. Just very flat, and there's really no, no rhyme or reason to what Miami's doing tonight on offense. Crossland trying to knock it out inside the 10, and he knocks it out inside the 20. And let's see where they'll mark it. They'll mark it at the 16-yard line. So Andy Crossland, that is the 11th punt this year. He's knocked out inside the 20. He's actually having a better year punting the football than he is on the, on the place kicking. Yeah, he's doing a good job. And Butch Davis trying to tell him where we need the football to go. And it's not that bad of a kick, but Miami not doing a good job in getting the football back after stopping Pitt. They just can't find a first down is not coming very easy to the Miami offense. And this defense... Glad for the Miami defense that they're playing so well that they're still in the lead by seven points. Well, I think you mentioned the word rhythm, John, and, and certainly the, after that early touchdown, Miami hasn't had very much offensive rhythm. Pitch to Barlow. Barlow with some room up across the 20 and close to the 25-yard line before Edward Reed made the tackle. But a nice pickup on first down. Yeah, Pitt offensive line doing a nice job coming off the football. Just a toss sweep to the wide side to Barlow, and he finds a lot of running room. Let's take a look at what's going on up front. It looks like number 90, Quincy Hibbs, chasing it from behind. Number 98, Matt Sweeney chasing it from behind. You see Edward Reed on the tackle, but not until the running back, uh, Kevin Barlow, gets seven yards. Second and three, Panthers. Give to the fullback, Fiola, and he gets maybe a yard. Hurricane defense closing on the fullback quickly with Damian Lewis leading the tacklers. And with 4.35 to go second quarter, it'll bring up third and about a yard for Pittsburgh. Not what Butch Davis expected. He expected his team to come out and really put it to the University of Pittsburgh, especially with it, with everything's on the line uh, in the next couple of weeks. But Pitt, you got to give him credit. They come out and play tough this, uh, this evening. Dan Morgan back in the ballgame for the Hurricanes at weak side linebacker. Third and a yard. Pitch to Barlow. Barlow forced back inside. He spun and will get close to a first down. It's going to depend on the spot. Nate Webster and Dan Morgan coming up on the tackle. Barlow made a heck of a move just to get some positive yardage. You saw Nate Webster in the middle of football field force Barlow back to the inside. Watch the move on the outside. He'll spin back to his left right here. As soon as he sees the scraping linebacker, you see Morgan to the outside. Nate Webster coming in trying to deliver the knockout punch. He'll be close to the first down. Great individual ever at that time by number 43, Kevin Barlow. Sophomore out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They are going to measure for a first down, and it is a Panther first down. So Pittsburgh will move the sticks with 4.09 left to go second quarter. And, John, you mentioned that they're hanging around in this game. It's a dangerous, it's a dangerous position for the University of Miami to be in because right now it's got to be going through your head. Hey, we've seen the game tapes. We've seen Pitt. Uh, get beat from behind from Temple and Rutgers, and right now they're hanging around. First and 10, Panthers at their 26. Lytle will throw it. Wide open. Down the sideline, Murphy open, and he juggled and dropped it. I think he might have taken his eye off it to see where Delvin Brown was. Marquise Fitzgerald was beaten on the play. Delvin Brown coming over from the hash mark, the safety, and Murphy just flat out dropped it. Yeah, had the cornerback pressing coverage on the left side of your screen, and you had Delvin Brown playing the hash. It was a nice play fake by Lytle. He waits till the last second, tries to fit the football down the sideline. You saw Marquise Fitzgerald had the short coverage, and Delvin Brown got the attention of the wide receiver, Terry Murphy, really a sure-handed receiver for the Panthers, came into the game with 34 catches. That time doesn't come up with the big play. That's the way Pitt can hang around making plays like that. Nick Ward in to replace Marquise Fitzgerald on a second and 10. Give inside. Barlow cannot get away. He did get about four yards. Quincy Hicks making the tackle for Miami along with Michael Smith. 
It was Hips who had him around the ankle and wouldn't let go until Smith arrived. That's right. And Barlow looks like he'd be limping around a little bit. He had Quincy Hips, all of the 6'4", 255-pound sophomore, draped around his ankles. Just a trap play inside by the Panthers. But Miami not fooled on the play to bring up a third and six for the Pitt Panthers. Seven out of 11 on third down conversions tonight for Pittsburgh. Third and six with four wide receivers in the game. Rydell to throw, over the middle, incomplete. Al Blades had the coverage on Julius Dixon, and Pittsburgh will be forced to kick it away. Well, the football usually draws a crowd over the middle of the football field. That time, Al Blades and Nate Webster were part of the party on the inside. They had great positioning, nice job on third down by the Miami defense. Greg DeBolt into punt, and Santana Moss back to receive for the Hurricanes. Miami trying to put the return on. Nice kick. Moss at his 18. Moss to the 30. And that's where he goes down. Number 21, Shafan Allen, a backup defensive back, making the tackle after a 52-yard punt and a 12-yard return from Santana Moss. There's 258 left to go second quarter. It's Miami 14, Pittsburgh 7. Sunday night. This is your last chance for these incredible savings. 27 dealers, 10,000 new Fords to choose from, and everyone is 10 sale price to move. Get less than 1% financing or up to 1,500 cash back. Bring your friends, bring your family, but hurry. Ford's factory authorized 10 sale and Sunday. Don't miss it, because you can't afford not to drive a Ford. Hey, Mr. Science. Ever wonder what a hard-working engine goes through? Yeah. It gets the high revving I drove over the mountain because it was their guts kicked out of it. With abuse like that, you don't want to take chances. This is Quaker State 4x4, a synthetic blend for hard-working engines made by guys with more college degrees than they've had dates. It's been tested. For pure maximum protection, there's nothing better. I wouldn't lie to you. They're not paying me enough. Quaker State. Sensible technology. What more do you need to know? You see the score and time remaining in the second quarter. Miami has it first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Hurricanes with 2.58 to go in the second quarter, trying to put together something before halftime. Covington on the rollout. Throws it back to James. This is a play they scored on on the second play of the game. James across the 40 and will have first down yardage to the 42-yard line. Julian Graham coming back from his defensive end position to make the tackle. Play was set up again perfectly. Had blockers out in front. Edron James does a nice job. Deception was there by Scott Covington of trying to push the corner. This time he peeks around a little bit earlier than the second play of the football game that resulted in a touchdown. You see Ty Wise saying, come on, Edron, I'll push you up there. Get out of the way. Let's get a first down and get in the end zone before halftime. Keynes with the three wide out formation. Covington, plenty of time. Going deep down the sideline. Andre King in a jump ball, and that ball batted down. Hank Poteet making the defensive play for Pittsburgh. Well, Hank Poteet finally coming up with a play at the corner position. It looks like Miami was making a living going against Poteet and Creighton, the two corners for Pittsburgh. But that time, a very long throw from the left hash all the way down the right sideline. You see Andre King and Santana Moss going down the outside of the football field. Just a jump ball, as you said, Frank, and the ball was just a shade underthrown. A nice positioning play by Hank Poteet. One more look at it as we have 2.29 left to go in the second quarter. Second and 10 Miami at their 42. Covington again will throw. Edron James open at the 45. James to midfield and bounces into Pittsburgh territory close to a first down. Damon Gibson coming back from his defensive line spot to make a tackle, and that will be a Hurricane first down. That's a good decision. When you're a quarterback and you feel like you're struggling, and you need something to hang your hat on, you need something to get you some confidence, the check down is always a boost because it's an easy throw. You give it to a, a playmaker with a big space over the middle of the football field, and he'll usually make a play for you. And Miami spends their first time out, 2.22 left to go, and the ball in Pittsburgh territory at the 48-yard line. You see. Scott Covington huddling with Rob Chudzinski, Kenny Kelly, and Butch Davis. I think what they're talking about is last, the last couple of plays that Scott went down the right side, it looked like the left side and Reggie Wayne was beyond 
uh, Creighton, the defensive back, the cornerback, and they may be going back saying, hey, you know what, if we do go to that all-go pattern where we have two receivers going to the wide side and that short side, stay on the wide side a little bit longer and then come back and see if you can fit the football into Reggie Wayne streaking down the short side of the field. It's a shorter throw. Yeah, Miami, an important drive here. Simply, you want to get points on the board, extend the lead, and you get the second half kickoff. So you want to try and score and not give Pittsburgh any time to do anything with the football. And Pittsburgh, uh, through most of the year, they're two and seven. They've been a first half team because they've blown leads in the second half to Rutgers and Temple at home. So that's not a good sign if you're Pittsburgh. No, you don't want to jump out, especially. And you know that what was strange about those two games, they were home, Frank, yeah. and it was uh, it was just an unusual situation for the Panthers to be in to lose those games because you expect to win. And in Miami, right now, in a position where they can make Pittsburgh very uncomfortable if they can stick it in the end zone. First and ten, Hurricanes at the Pittsburgh 48. Blitz coming, and Covington cannot get away. The sack from number 92, Marlon Young, out of Miami. Looked like Scott was drifting to his left, wanted to get the ball to the motion receiver, Andre King, but as he took a drop, he really got closer to Marlon King. Watch Scott Covington's drop. He'll drift to the left a little bit, wanting to throw the ball very quick, but actually goes closer to the line of scrimmage and right where the pressure was of Marlon Young and company. You see Marlon Young and Trey McRae there on the stop for the Panthers. That is one criticism I would have of Scott Covington this year is that he gives up sacks on first down instead of throwing the ball away. You know, you got to be aware of down and distance. And, you know, it's to me, it's a cardinal sin to give up a sack on first down. Just throw it in the seat somewhere. Throw it in the ground at somebody's feet. You, you can't give up. Put yourself in a second and 20 in, in any kind of situation. That time, I think he felt pressure because of his drop. And if had he taken a drop maybe straight back or a little bit, you know, to the right of that pressure, he may have had a chance to throw the football away. But it looked like Marlon Young and Trey McRae were on top of him before he really could do anything about it. Well, it's a loss of 10. It'll bring up second 20, and Miami forced to spend their second time out. As Marlon Young coming up with his uh, third and a half sack of the season. There's the quarterback numbers. And, you know, the yardage and the completions look pretty good for Scott, but the uh, the one interception was really a terrible decision. Well, looking at the stats, uh, 8 for 13, 183, you would think Scott Covington's having a, a pretty decent uh, evening, but the feeling you get is just that a couple of the throws were, were so off target and maybe right to pit defenders that you get a feeling that he's not having a good night. Yeah, Gonzalez dropped a, a sure interception right on his numbers. Second and 20, they operate out of the shotgun, does Miami. Blitz coming. Covington goes to the hot man, Moss at midfield. Santana to the 45 of Pittsburgh, and he'll be brought down inside the Pittsburgh 40-yard line. That'll be about a yard shy of a first down. Great reaction by wide receiver and quarterback. Santana Moss does an excellent job of coming off the football against the Blitz, but watch where Scott Covington puts this football. He leads him right away from the coverage. Just a nice job by Covington. That time he does come up with a big play, had time to throw the football, and delivered it outside. Watch Santana Moss. He knows it's Blitz. He does his little reaction to the Blitz, which was a quick slant. That was the uh, complimentary move anytime they see that Blitz. Scott put it on the numbers, and it's a first. It's a third down. Third and a yard, James going backwards in the hole, and he is going to be close to the first down at the 38-yard line. They might have to measure for this. Nick Cole on the tackle for Pittsburgh, so the clock stops while they determine whether it's a first down and whether they've got to measure, and they are going to measure. A minute 58 left to go in the second quarter. Miami leading 14-7. to Edger and James has both Miami touchdowns. A 68-yard reception from Scott Covington and a one-yard touchdown run. You know, coming into this game, the Pittsburgh Panther defense the rushing defense has done a good job, but the pass defense it hasn't been so hot. And, and you can see the, the rush defense right now. It looks like it is enough for the first down. They're having struggle. They're struggling running to the short side of the football field, and I think that's that was their strength coming into this. Yeah, that's the game. Miami's bread and butter. The uh, the stretch play to the short side, or the toss sweep to the short side. But Pittsburgh's done a good job defensing that in this first half of play. It is a Miami first down at the Pittsburgh 38, and they'll start the clock back up. So the clock moving with a minute 54. Plenty of time for Miami. They have one timeout remaining. Three wide receivers in the formation. Andre Fulcher, the tight end in motion. Covington with a blitz coming. Steps up in the pocket, now looking for help. Does get rid of it, complete to Andre King at the 32-yard line. That's a pickup of seven. 
So some good ad-libbing by Covington there. Yeah, he bought some time and took a shot after it, but a nice job of getting rid of the football as the clock continues to go down in 122 and counting. Second and three for the Hurricanes. Covington again to throw. Again over the middle, complete to the tight end. Fulcher dragged down at the 24-yard line by Nick Cole, and they'll stop the clock while they reset the yardsticks at the 24-yard line of Pittsburgh. Yeah, Scott Covington may just call another play at the line of scrimmage. He's had great success throwing the football tonight for yardage and completion percentage. Let's see if he can stick it in the end zone right before halftime. Clock moving now with 108 to go, second quarter. Covington to the outside, complete to Andre King, and he runs out at the Pittsburgh 18-yard line, a pickup of six. Trey Creighton on the coverage, but that does stop the clock with a minute and one second left to go. Pittsburgh making wholesale changes on defense. They're replacing the entire front seven. Yeah, it looks like it. They've been on the field trying to get upfield, and maybe the Pitt coaching staff seeing they're a little bit tired, but Miami doing a nice job of protecting the football, and they still have a minute and one second left to go before halftime and one timeout remaining. Tenth play of this drive, which started at the Miami 45. Covington. Down the hash, complete to Bubba Franks, the tight end. Gets loose at the 10. Bubba inside the five-yard line, and he'll have a first down and goal. Ken Cachabera made the tackle, along with Brandon Dewey. And with 53 seconds left to go in the second quarter, it'll be first and goal. Hurricanes at the three. Easy pitch and catch on the tight end option. And when you're 6'6", 245, you can do things like this, especially when you have the athletic ability and the speed of a Daniel Bubba Franks. He can make people miss and carry you close to the end zone. That time he carried pit defenders all the way down to the three yard line. They list him at 6'6", 245, but he's a lot closer to 260. First and goal. Edger and James looking for his third touchdown. Stretches to the goal line. No signal. They mark him down at the one. His knee was down, and then he stretched the football out. I think yeah. that's a good call. Now they now signal touchdown. Him a touchdown. Now they signal touchdown. That is a bizarre piece of officiating right there. We'll have to take another look to see if his knee was down, but it doesn't matter because the Miami Hurricanes just pushed their lead to 20 to 7 on a tough inside run by number five, Edger and James. We'll take a look from the end zone shot. Just three Pitt Panthers there to stop him. He goes right through the middle. Of all three of them, you see Dinkins on the uh, holding on to a leg, and that's the power and the and the just the great inside running ability of Edron James. James third touchdown of the night. Crossland's conversion try is up and good. 27 seconds left to go second quarter. It's Miami 21 and Pittsburgh seven. So Edron James now owns the Miami, Miami single season touchdown record. That is his 15th of the year. Well, he's been finding the end zone with regularity the last couple of weeks. The offensive line doing a nice job of trying to get him with some running room, but it was all Edron James, just individual effort. Looked like Dinkins, DJ Dinkins really had a good shot along with Purefoy on the outside, number 19, to really keep Edron out of the end zone, but that was a determined running back for the Miami Hurricanes, and he gets it in to the end zone. I just wonder what took him so long to signal touchdown. I mean, it's not like he was in the middle of a huge pile or anything. I like thought that. it right away was a touchdown, not thinking that his knee had touched because it looked like he extended the ball over the goal line. But there you see an 11-play scoring drive, 70 yards, 2 minutes and 31 seconds. Covington was 6 of 7 on the drive for 64 yards, so I'm going to start stop talking bad about you, Scott. Yeah, as soon as we said we start questioning his decision-making, he comes up with a nice drive, and you know what the best thing about the drive is? Not only do you score 7, but you take it all the way down to 27 seconds left to go in the half, and you don't give Pittsburgh much time to do anything. And, and I thought they, they fought away from the sack. They, they fought some adversity on the drive, too. They did a nice job of sticking with has been working for them. That's the running of Edron James and the decision-making of Scott Covington. So Edron James has accounted for 18 of Miami's 21 points as you look at the senior quarterback, Scott Covington. And you know what? Maybe some of it, John, is he played so well through yeah, the first he, seven games I, I of the think season. that might be it. That we're, we're he gave us reason. A, yeah, we're expecting a lot he's, out of Scott. He's got some lofty goals that he set for us. Line drive kick. Poteet sees it roll by him and into the end zone. And he will let it uh, down there for the touchback. And Pittsburgh will start at the 20-yard line with 27 seconds. The ball was not touched in play. So no time ran off the clock. Scott yeah. Covington, the senior from Laguna Nigel, California. I think you hit it right on the head, Frank, because Scott Covington has played so well. And he's found all of his receivers. He really never locks in on one receiver. Although Santana Moss has the, the bulk of his touchdowns, he, he spread the football around in the last couple weeks. You see 
Bubba Franks catching the ball. You see Mondrell Fulcher catching the ball. You see him trying to go down the field to Andre King. You know, Edron James on the season has 12 catches. Yeah, it looks like Pittsburgh is just going to take the kneel down unless they got something tricky up their sleeve and Lytle. It wasn't really a kneel down. He kind of stuttered around yeah. there and he kind of fell He doesn't forward. want to get a, a minus 119 yards. Yeah, He's like going forward. Got. And Pittsburgh, uh, they're running off the field, so they are content to let this half end with the score at 21 to 7 as Walt Harris takes his team into the locker room. They're trailing by two touchdowns. Coming up at halftime, we'll have an interview with LPGA professional Tracy Kurdike. We'll have the highlights and stats and a whole lot more coming up from the Orange Bowl at halftime. It is Miami 21, Pittsburgh 7. We're at the halftime break. We'll be right back on Sports Channel. At halftime in the Orange Bowl, it's the Miami Hurricanes 21, the Pittsburgh Panthers 7. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you as the Hurricanes try to set up a showdown for the Big East title with the Syracuse Orangemen on November 28th. Here's a look at the numbers from the first half. Team stats, not much in the way of rushing yards for either team. Miami only 19 as you take 21 yards in sacks off their rushing total, but 237 yards through the air, John, and uh, they're even in turnovers. But, you know, we were questioning Scott Covington in the first half. Well, he's put up some good numbers. We'll, we'll, when we move to the individual numbers, you'll see it. But Miami doing the job through the air so far. You're right, 13 of 18 for 237, a touchdown and an interception. Edron James, 13 rushes for 34 yards and two touchdowns. But a big stat there, three receptions for 90 yards, most of that coming on the second play of the ballgame. You see the pit uh, quarterback, 75 yards, Matt Lytle, one touchdown and one interception respectively. And Murphy doing a nice job on the outside, two receptions for 47 yards. That's going to have to be a combination that Pitt's going to try to get back into the game with. Well, Miami against Boston College and Temple, they did a good job of putting those teams away early and keeping their focus and concentration, something that in games like this are very important if they want to set up the important games at the end of the season. Well, they have to. University of Miami football on Sports Channel is being brought to you in part by your South Florida Chevrolet dealers. Chevy's got something for you. By Hip Health Plan of Florida. So where do you get your health care? And by Pro Player Sports Apparel. You have a life? Look good in it. Ready for the second half kickoff? As Pittsburgh will kick it away to the Hurricanes, Nick Lotz will kick off with... Najee Davenport and James Jackson back deep to receive. Miami with the 21-7 lead, trying to set up their showdown with Syracuse on November 28th, which would be for the conference championship. Lots hits it high. This is Davenport at the 6. Davenport stumbled and then drilled down at the 20-yard line, number 57 on the special teams tackle Brian Knight, the backup linebacker. So Miami will start first and 10 from the 19, they mark it. Gonna make it to 20. The referee mismarked the ball. So the crew of uh, the John Smith's Big East crew is struggling a little bit at the end of the first half and uh, here to start the second. Let's see what Miami does coming out, the opening play of the second half. Get the ball in their own 19-yard line, see if they can go to the runner. They haven't been successful running the football in the first half. Let's see if they open up with play action. First and 10, James and Mick Partland, the running backs in the eye. James on the delay. Skips away from the tackler and will pick up a few out to the 23-24 yard line. Seth Hornack in on the tackle along with Damon Gibson, the 6'4", 290 junior, number 94 out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Give Edger in a gain of four on first down. He now needs 66 yards to reach the 1,000 yard mark for the season. Had 34 in the first half, needed 104 to crack the 1,000 mark. Second and a long six. Double wide receiver to the bottom of the screen. Bubba Franks, the tight end, set to the top of the formation. Again, it's Edger and James. James to the 25, moving the pile a bit to the 27-yard line. And it'll bring up third and about three or four for Miami. Getting up off the bottom of the pile, Seth Hornack, the safety. Nick Cole also helping out on that last tackle. Not a lot of creases tonight, Frank, on first and second down to run the football. We've seen in the last couple weeks that Edron James has had plenty of room to run and really get up to top speed before he hits the line of scrimmage. Tonight really struggling to get, get in high gear before he gets beyond the line of scrimmage. Miami needs to reach close to the 30-yard line to pick up a first down. On third down, Covington will throw for it. Over the middle, Fulcher wide open. Module Fulcher across midfield, rumbling into Pittsburgh territory. 
before he is finally brought down by Nick Cole, the outside linebacker, but a huge gain on third and three for the Hurricanes. You love when you see the tight end, either Bubba Franks or Mondrell Fulcher. This time, Mondrell Fulcher does a nice job. He comes out of the backfield just like a fullback would, and I think the Pitt Panthers, they lose him in coverage. A nice play designed by Larry Coker and the offensive staff. Fulcher does a great job of running after the catch. This is something that both of these tight ends possess. They both can run. They're big and strong and physical. They make players miss, and they make you pay. 29 yards on the completion of Mondrell Fulcher. He's piled up some big yardage the last couple of weeks. Edger and James behind a good block from Joaquin Gonzalez. James to the 40 and inside the 35-yard line. Edger and James picking up close to 13 yards and a first down. Seth Hornack and Hank Poteet have to combine on the tackle. You called it number 73 in green. Watch the down block right there at the point of attack. Just does a great job to Marlon Young. Just flushes him down. And that has to be the best run on first down for Miami all evening. Really hit it with some authority off the, off the corner. And Joaquin Gonzalez started it up front for the Canes. I have a feeling that uh, Art Kehoe was not very silent at halftime with no. his offensive line. First and 10 Hurricanes with 12.44 left to go third quarter. Again, James. This time nowhere to run. Stacked up and buried right at the line of scrimmage. Julian Graham making the initial contact. And helped by Ryan Gonzalez, the middle linebacker, number 55. Yeah, Graham does a nice job coming up and, and stuffing really the run on first down. Edron James, Richard Mercier was pulling on the play. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to follow 62 to the outside. That time Edron tried to break it back and cut it back against the grain and really no gain on the play. Second and 10 for the Hurricanes, offset eye. With McPartland now in motion. Covington, quick throw to Reggie Wayne at the 25, and down he goes right there in the arms of Trey Creighton. Pickup of close to uh, eight yards, call it seven. It'll be third and three for the Hurricanes in Pittsburgh territory at the 25-yard line. Miami had a lot of success going to their wideouts on the pit cornerbacks. This time, just a little fake of the toss sweep, and they run a quick hitch outside to Reggie Wayne. They pick up some yardage. They pick up seven yards, making it a third and three. Canes have to reach almost to the Pittsburgh 22 to pick up a first down. So it's a little bit over three yards, not quite four. Again, McPartland in motion. Blitz, Blitz coming. Miami picked it up for Santana Moss in the corner and overthrew him at the flag. Seth Hornack was in coverage. A well-designed play against the Blitz, and Scott just overthrew him by a bit. Yeah, it was perfectly designed play. You were going to gamble. If, if you're the pit defense, you're gambling. If you're the offense, you're saying, great, we got one-on-one -on -one to the outside, and just a little bit too much pressure in Scott Covington's face, he overthrows a wide-open Santana Moss. So Andy Crossland. Will try a 43-yard field goal. He's four of seven on the year with a long of 41. So this would be a season-long field goal. Fake Popovich. Touchdown. Popovich wide open. He's going to score. How about that? How about that? Jeff Popovich from 26 yards out, and that thing busted wide open. And Butch Davis is excited on the sidelines. I think he had a hand in that one. Boy, just a great call. Jeff Popovich comes back and takes the direct snap like he's going to hold it, goes right off with the right side with a big right tackle, and really goes untouched for the Hurricane score. Well, they have, been, they have a number of fake field goals that they use. They used a similar play at Cincinnati this year, which got him a first down. And this one popped wide open for a touchdown. Now Crossland for the extra point out of Popovich's hold. It is up and it is good. And with 11.15 to go third quarter, it's Miami 28, Pittsburgh 7. Let's take another look. Great down block and a nice job on the outside by number 73. Again, Joaquin Gonzalez and Popovich. All he has to do is not get hit by the goal post because no one is in the way of Jeff Popovich. He goes in untouched for the Hurricane score and Butch Davis and staff excited on the sidelines about what had transpired. Watch the reaction of Butch Davis. He loves this. Get in the end zone, Jeff. That a baby. Miami opening the second half with a touchdown, much to Butch Davis's pleasure. It's 28-7. We'll be right back on Sports Channel. Sports Channel Florida is your ticket to college football game day. Tune in every Saturday at 10 a.m. for Saturday morning college kickoff, a pregame guide to the hottest college matchups. It's all right here on Sports Channel Florida. And this crowd just energized by the fake field goal, a 26-yard touchdown run from Jeff Popovich. 
And, John, I think they had to see something in the way Pittsburgh at field goal blocks from that hash mark because there's nobody in that guard tackle gap on the right side of the Hurricane formation. We saw a great setup blocks. Bubba Franks had a clear knockdown. He flushed the whole line inside. Joaquin Gonzalez came back to the outside, and there was just a huge hole for Jeff Popovich to run through for an easy special team score. Now, remember last year, Popovich threw a touchdown pass and to Bubba Baylor, Franks yeah, on a fake field right. goal against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. right. So now they've been bur the Pittsburgh special teams have been burned two years in a row for fake field goal touchdowns by the Hurricanes. Here's Seavers, pooch kicking it high in the air. And the ball caught at the 25-yard line by Brandon Williams, and he gets up to the 30. Chris Campbell tripped him up on the Miami Hurricanes special teams. A look at Campbell, the true freshman out of Mount Pleasant, Texas, number 48, as Butch Davis urges his defense on. The Hurricanes coming out in the second half. You know, this is a 14-7 game with three minutes to go in the first half. Miami puts together a touchdown drive to end the half and a touchdown drive of 80 yards to open the second half. Well, that's how you want to come out of the locker room. You go in with a big score. You come out with a great special team score. Now the defense encouraging the crowd to get into the football game. Pittsburgh with the double wide out to the top of the screen. First and 10 from their 29. Give to Barlow. Barlow hauled down from behind as Damian Lewis drops him for a loss of a yard. Well, he shows some great speed on the inside. Damian Lewis, just a very athletic move to run and chase down the Panther running back. Behind the line of scrimmage. It looked like he was behind the line of scrimmage. They're going to call it no game, but a great play in any result by Damian Lewis. Damian Lewis came into the ball game with 39 tackles, three for loss, a couple of sacks, and a pass breakup. The sophomore out of Sulphur Springs, Texas. Second and ten. Officially no gain on the play. Again, Pittsburgh with the twin receivers to the top of the screen. Schneider and Barlow, the running backs. Lytle under pressure, and down he goes. Matt Sweeney comes up with the sack. Yeah, the right side of the line for the University of Pittsburgh just collapses, and number 98, Matt Sweeney getting in. That's his fourth sack of the season. A very ha happy young man on that Kane defense. Really just a collapse by the right side. Looked like the center and guard, 78, Justin Wade, just really let the floodgates open, and Matt Sweeney was a happy recipient of the quarterback, Matt Lytle. Justin Wade forced to start tonight with the injury to Ethan Weidel, the regular right guard for the Pittsburgh Panthers. And Matt Sweeney, who's had a quiet game so far tonight, comes up with the sack. It's third and 19 for Pittsburgh. Give to Barlow. Barlow will get about nine or 10 yards. Al Blades and Dan Morgan combined on the tackle, but that is a give up play for the Miami defense. They'll let him have that 10 yards because it was th four, a third and long and it brings up now a punting situation. This is how Miami really wanted to start the game with energy. They score on the second play and then they maybe fall asleep a little bit later in the first half, but now they come out energized out of the locker room and force Pitt to turn it over on, on downs. Greg DeBolt to kick, Santana Moss to receive. Toward the near sideline, bouncing back toward Pittsburgh, and it'll be down by Shafan Allen at the Miami 39-yard line. Miami takes over there first and 10 after a 31-yard punt from Greg DeBolt. So with 9.05 left to go third quarter, Miami with the football again and a 28-7 lead. And, John, you talk about uh, a knockout punch. Maybe that fake field goal delivered it. And Kenny Kelly is now coming in the game at quarterback for the Hurricanes. So I don't know if we've seen the last of Scott Covington for the night. It may depend on how Kenny handles himself in this next series or two. But uh, certainly with a three touchdown lead and good field position, not a bad time to put him in. Bartlett and Jackson are the running backs. James Jackson spurts through a hole and keeps moving his feet and gets up to close to the 44-yard line. So he picked up five on first down. Trey Creighton and Demont Gibson on the tackle for Pittsburgh. Didn't look like Jackson was going to get that much. That almost looked like Edron James moving the pile. This time you have James Jackson, number 21, 5'11", 215, the sophomore. He's had five touchdowns on the season. He moves the pile for a nice gain on first down. Officially a gain of six. It'll bring up second and four from just inside the Miami 45-yard line. Kenny Kelly, the freshman from Tampa, is the quarterback. Kelly to throw. Plenty of time. Now the protection breaks down. Kenny loads it up and is going to go deep for Santana Moss, who makes the catch at the seven. 
Moss gave ground and will be dropped by Creighton at the DJ Dinkins rather at the 11 yard line. But that is a Miami first down and a nice piece of ad living by both Kelly and Moss who kept the pattern alive. Well, they say you create your own luck sometimes and definitely Kenny Kelly was trying to create a play on the outside, had plenty of time, thought the Panthers were gonna come with a blitz, they max protect everybody, so Kenny Kelly has plenty of time. I think if he would have got this off clean, it would have been a touchdown in the back of the end zone, but you see a great reception by Santana Moss and a bad play by the Pitt secondary. 44 yards on the game. This is Jackson. Jackson behind a great block, gets down to the one, and he is down there just shy of the end zone. Richard Mercier threw a terrific block to spring him for a 10-yard gain. You saw the patience of James Jackson. He saw a little crease provided by Richard Mercier, and he tried to spring the Rockets into the end zone. He just came up about a foot short right here. Watch the second bit of patience, and then he sees daylight. He tries to get through, but a nice tackle from the inside out. It looked like uh, number 53, Ken Kachabra. You get word that Scott Covington suffered a laceration to his chin, and that is why Kenny Kelly is in the game, and I believe it happened on that corner pattern that he overthrew Moss and took a shot. Jackson stacked up and short of the goal line, did not get in. Brian Knight, number 57, making the play for the Pittsburgh defense. So it'll bring up a second end goal. Been some tough yardage trying to be gained inside the five yard line by the Miami offense. If there's one thing the Pitt defense has done today is made the Miami Hurricanes earn their way into the end zone. And we have a timeout being called by the officials as it looks like a Pittsburgh player is injured. Ryan Gonzalez, number 55, at the one yard line and the Pittsburgh training staff will attend to the freshman linebacker from Saddlebrook, New Jersey, 6'2", 220 pounds, taking the place of uh, Phil Clark Pittsburgh's outstanding middle linebacker who has a groin injury missed the Boston College game and is missing this game in front of his hometown fans, the graduate of South Miami High School. 7.05 left to go third quarter. There's time out on the field. It's Miami 28, Pittsburgh 7. We'll be right back on Sports Channel. Silverado, the Motor Trend Truck of the Year. It's bigger, it's more powerful. It's the truck from Chevrolet. This season, Sports Channel Florida is the exclusive TV home for the Florida Panthers' entire 82 game season. From the pregame drama to the drop of the puck. The overtime battles to post-game interviews. Oh, there's no doubt. Sports Channel Florida delivers the action. Catch all 82 Panthers games on Sports Channel Florida. Because it's more than a game. Compete! Shark now, shark now. Batch it up, batch it up, batch it up. Here we go, here we go, here we go. The enigmatic coach of the Miami Dolphins is back in the hot seat on the Jimmy Johnson Show. The Dolphins have tested the boundaries, and this season the bar has been raised. Join Jimmy Johnson every week as he analyzes the Dolphins' opponents and gives you an insider's look into the Dolphins' strategy. The Jimmy Johnson Show, every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on Sports Channel and at 11.30 a.m. on NBC6. The Canes and you for 42. Now there's a great deal. Just $42 gets you five general admission tickets, five game programs, and five regular Coca-Colas for the UCLA game on December 5th. For more information, call 305-284-CANES or 1-800-GO-CANES for tickets today. That's 42 and you. Pretty good deal to see the third-ranked team in the country, currently UCLA, against these Miami Hurricanes. Kenny Kelly into the game. Scott Covington with a chin laceration. And we get word that Al Blade suffered a burner, but he is expected to return to the football game. Ryan Gonzalez came off with what appeared to be a left ankle injury for the Pittsburgh defense. Second and goal, Hurricanes. Wilbur Valdez, the fullback. Jackson, the tailback. Fulcher in motion. Kelly faking to James. Kelly, end zone, touchdown, Dan Smith. Dan Smith's first collegiate touchdown. 
and a great play by Miami, and that's something they can do a lot with Kenny Kelly, his athletic ability and mobility. Yeah, nice play call. Great play fake to the inside. Pitt looked like they were expecting the run to the strong side. Kenny Kelly comes outside and delivers a touchdown pass to the tight end. Dan Smith, watch the play fake here. Everybody in white jerseys pursuing. Really take your pick to the back of the end zone. Nice touch on the ball by Kenny Kelly to his tight end, Dan Smith, for the score. Andy Crossland on to attempt his fifth conversion of the night. Popovich the hole, the kick is up and through. And with six minutes and 44 seconds left to go in the third quarter, Miami has stretched their lead to 35 to seven. Dan Smith from Bonterre, Missouri, a pitcher on the Hurricane football team as well. Good all around athlete latching on to his first college touchdown. Yeah, it's got to feel good to get in the end zone. Kenny Kelly does a nice job, but just flipping the ball over the outstretched hands of linebacker Brian Knight. And Dan Smith was a very, he probably had a big smile on his face in the back of the end zone. He's got one now. Kenny Kelly leading that 61-yard touchdown drive in five plays, two minutes and 21 seconds. And the Hurricanes have broken this thing open at 35 to seven. So if this score holds up, Miami will travel to Syracuse on November 28th and play the Orangemen for the Big East Championship. And it's certainly a position that I don't think a lot of people expected Miami to be in at the end of the season. No, I don't think. I was one that uh, was kind of uh, worried about how Miami would come back after that tough loss, but they really responded, and they responded in the second half. You see there a five-play scoring drive, 61 yards, led by Kenny Kelly with a Smith one-yard TD reception. Kenny Kelly on the uh, drive, two for two, with the big play to Santana Moss, all culminating 45 yards in total for Kenny Kelly. Walt Harris searching for some solutions. It's been a trying year for Harris as Todd Seavers will kick off. Hank Poteet back to receive. Seavers hangs this one up. Poteet at the 13. Poteet got away from one tackler, but uh, not the rest of the Hurricanes as he goes down at the 16-yard line. That's where Pitt will start first and 10. Jeff Popovich in on the tackle. Chris Campbell there as well. And the last hurricane up off the pile looks to be uh, James Lewis, the fresh, or rather Marquise Fitzgerald. I think Marquise was the guy who sent him pinwheeling in That's the first right. place. And you then like, he got back in on the tackle. You like to see the intensity, even up 35 to 7 on special teams. You saw a lot of green jerseys swarming to the football, flying down on kickoff coverage. First and 10, Panthers at their 17 yard line. See the time remaining in the third quarter and the score. Lytle to throw. Pass outside to Murphy, complete, and he's dropped down at the 26-yard line. Nick Ward on the coverage for the Hurricanes. See Scott Covington with the chin bandaged up. Took a shot underneath a face mask. But uh, that'll hurt a lot less tomorrow after a victory. Yeah, but he's going to be looking himself in the mirror going, man, did they do a good job on that when I went in that quick? And Terry Murphy limping off. Looks to be a right hamstring as he picked up eight yards on the first down completion from Matt Lytle. And the clock stopped momentarily, 6.09 to go third quarter. Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Sports Channel from the Orange Bowl as Scott Covington has had a, a good night statistically. I think what really got us worried in the first half is he had two other balls that could have easily been interceptions that were dropped by Pittsburgh defenders. Give to the fullback. And he looks like he's got the first down as... Fiola carried the football. And Mi Miami's defense will have to start over at first and 10. Derek Ham, number 71, making the tackle. As Fiola on his first carry of the night, the junior from Pittsburgh will pick up the first down. 5.54 left to go third quarter. Well, you Miami gotta, has taken control of this football game. You got to hope now, Frank, that the Nate Websters and the Dan Morgans and your quarterback, Scott Covington, their injuries are okay for next week because right now it doesn't look like the Pitt Panthers have the punch on offense to even get back in this one. From the 28, Barlow in motion. Lytle over the middle, complete to Juan Williams' this tight end into Miami territory at the 46 before Al Blades makes the tackle. Nice play down the middle of the football field. The tight end, Juan Williams, coming up with a big catch. He came into the game with 10 catches, and Lytle throws a strike, really looking off. And then, kind of unorthodox, looked like he was going to the outside and really delivers it sidearm down the middle of the football field. The Canes weren't expecting him to go there, and Matt Lytle surprises the secondary with a big play. Williams' 11th catch of the season. That one good for 27 yards and a first down at the Miami 45. Lytle again to throw. 
trying to move out of the pocket. Faced by Ham, Lytle's pass incomplete, just threw that one away. Good pressure from the inside that time, and then Derek Ham forced him into the incompletion. The attendance, 38,084 at the Orange Bowl. As the Hurricanes and Pittsburgh Panthers go at it, 5.08 to go third quarter. It's Miami 35 and Pittsburgh 7. A look at Matt Lytle, senior from Wyomissing, Pennsylvania. Good size, 6'4", 225. Yeah, met Matt last night, a big kid. He's got great size, he's got good athletic ability. He does some, makes some good moves outside of the pocket. Second and 10. The late give, and Barlow cannot get away from Matt Sweeney, who drops him for a loss of a half yard. Matt Sweeney was determined to come up with that tackle. He was being blocked, and he had a hand on the running back. Watch Matt, Matt Sweeney from, the, from right from the get-go. You see him trying to get pushed out of the play and actually does a great job to find the running back, Kevin Barlow, and hang on to him. Third and still 10. Those guys, you got to love those guys, the tough guys, the tackles, the defensive tackles. They don't get their names called that many times, but they're working hard every play. And when they do, we've got to give them their props. Officially no gain on the last play, third and 10. Vital straight drop. Again over the middle and caught by the tight end. That's Kirk McMullen. And Edward Reed making the tackle at the Miami 23, but that is a Pittsburgh first down, a pickup of 18. Big catch by McMullen. The tight end went up and climbed the ladder and catches the ball. And Nate Webster's going, I was in perfect position. This is just a good throw and a great catch, a better catch. Just a nice throw right over the linebacker. And you see McMillan not worried about getting hit and very excited about coming down with that one. 4-12 to go third quarter. First down, Panthers at the Kane 24. Fiola, the lone running back, four wideouts in the formation. Lytle, quick drop. Complete to catch him at the 20, or at the 17 yard line. Kenny Ketchin making the play, and Nate Webster and Al Blades on the tackle. Gain is close to eight, bring up second and a long two. Yeah, Ketchin gets his first catch of the evening. It looks like he's hobbling out with an ankle. Pitt making some substitutions to get the right people in position. Nice tackle, a nice break on the play by Al Blades as you see Ketchin going off the sideline for the Panthers. Terry Murphy is back in at wide receiver along with Julius Dixon. Fiola and Barlow, the running backs. Cross pitch to Barlow. Barlow runs into Al Blades and Nick Ward drops him at the 15 yard line. Be about a yard shy of the first down. Al Blade's so good in run support. He is really good at coming up and helping out against the run. Well, Barlow was trying to get some running room to the outside, and Ben Kopp, number 93, the pit tight end, actually blocks Al Blades right to where Barlow wanted to run the football, and Blades actually goes around him and was very aggressive and determined to get to the ball carrier. That's a nice job by Al Blades of staying on the ball carrier, even though he was being blocked by the Panther tight end. Third and one for Pittsburgh. Pitch to Barlow. Barlow skips through the hole, has a first down and a lot more inside the 10-yard line to the eight, where Quincy Hips and Edward Reed make the tackle. Pickup of seven on that third and one play. Boy, terrific inside running by uh, Barlow, number 43. Just does a spin right through the line of scrimmage and the pit offensive line finding him a crack and he takes advantage of it. Watch, he takes the ball, the pitch back, and it's an inside pitch move. You see the defender from Miami just fall down, but a nice move to gain some yardage inside the 10-yard line. He moves it down to the eight. Tenth play of the drive for the Panthers. Lytle on an option. Lytle picks some yardage up when it looks like there was nowhere to go. He got three. Michael Smith in on the tackle, along with Nate Webster of the Hurricanes. Really didn't look like there was anything there, John, and then all of a sudden it opened up a bit. I think Lytle took the ball at the eight, went to the 11, and then cut it back inside. He almost loses some ground trying to find some room. There are a lot of bodies looking for the quarterback, and the quarterback just tucks the football and goes north and south, gets it to the five-yard line, but that was tough inside running. The Canes were in the right position to stop the option. That was just a nice individual effort by Lytle, the quarterback. Second and goal for Pittsburgh. Lytle looking no. for Murphy, broken up and nearly intercepted. 
Marquise Fitzgerald got his hands on the football and probably should have intercepted it. Yeah, it looked like Al Blades and Fitzgerald in the right spot. The defensive stayed at home. The defensive secondary stayed at home. They didn't buy the play fake of the toss. You see Al Blades cutting in, and Marquise Fitzgerald almost has a pick in the end zone. A nice job, a nice positioning of breaking on the football. I think the Hurricane defenders tonight were doing a nice job, especially on the outside of taking the gamble and breaking on the football. Third pass breakup of the year for Fitzgerald, the freshman out of St. Petersburg. Third and goal. Blitz coming from Morgan. Lytle's pass, again, nearly intercepted. Edward Reed had the coverage on R.J. English. And boy, if that ball would have been up, that would have been 100 yards the other way. Just great coverage by Edward Reed. They showed pressure. They showed blitz on the outside. Man-to-man, -man, everybody's locking up on a, on a pit-wide receiver. And Edward Reed does a nice job. He'll be to the left of your screen. You see the pressure by Ham and company. But you said, Frank, if that ball's up, it's 100 yards the other way. Well, Pittsburgh brings the field goal team on the field. Nick Lotz, who is 0 for 1 on field goals. He just took over the job from Chris Ferencic. Out of the hold of Kenny Stein from 22 yards away. Snap is good. Kick is on the way. And it is good. So Nick Lotz converts from 22 yards out. And with a minute 19 to go in the third quarter, it is now Miami 35 and Pittsburgh 10 as Walt Harris's team finally gets on the scoreboard after Miami had scored four consecutive touchdowns. 119 to go in the third quarter. Canes up 35-10. We'll be right back here on Sports Channel. You know, ideas and inventions come from people in all walks of life. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? If so, Invention Submission Corporation has information to help you get started. ISC is America's largest inventor service firm. Call now and learn how to submit your idea to companies through ISC's data bank and apply for a patent. Even if your idea is just to improve an existing product, call for ISC's free information. For your free information, call 1-800-338-9999. Whoever said you can't buy love has not been to the Humane Society of Broward County. Whether it's a dog or puppy, kitten or cat, there's always love for sale. Hi, I'm James Judd with my daughter Carissa and Ollie, who my family adopted from the Humane Society of Broward County. Let the Humane Society orchestrate the perfect adoption for you. Find your friend for life today at the Humane Society of Broward County. Call 954-989-3977. There's the uh, Hurricane Ibis Beanie Dolls they gave away tonight with a contribution to the Daily Bread Food Bank of uh, canned goods. First 5,000 fans got those. Ibis never looked better. No. He's, <laughs> he's pretty good in person, too. Here's the kickoff. James Jackson waiting at the goal line. Jackson across the 20 to the 24-yard line. And down he goes there, and that's where the Hurricanes will start first and 10. Seth Hornack in on the tackle. And the Hurricane offense returns to the field. With Scott Covington back in the ball game now, after receiving treatment for the uh, laceration of the chin. And Kenny Kelly, in his only drive so far tonight, led the Canes to a touchdown. Yeah, and he was two for two on the drive, and Scott Covington has a good night going himself, statistically moving the football down for big chunks of yardage. Reggie Wayne and Daryl Jones, both wide receivers, to the top of the screen. Reggie and James cuts it back and dragged down by Chucky Brown at the 27-yard line. Picked up four on first down. Pittsburgh scoring drive on that last possession, 13 plays, 78 yards, and five minutes and 24 seconds, culminating in the 22-yard field goal by Nick Lotz. And with 43 seconds to go third quarter, Miami with a second and six, leading at 35 to 10. Again, both wide receivers to the top of the formation. And Jim James gets a couple and then is thrown back. Julian Graham and Nick Cole combining on the tackle for Pittsburgh. That was a nice tackle by Graham and Cole. Right in the middle, usually you see Edron James pushing that pile forward when he has some room in the middle of the football field, but the Pitt Panthers doing a good job in a game 
that is really uh, 35 to 10, and the Panther defense been on the field a long time in the first half. Gain of a yard will bring up third and five, but Miami will not get another playoff as we reach the end of the third quarter in the Orange Bowl. In this Big East encounter, it's Miami 35 and Pittsburgh 10. Back with the fourth quarter from the Orange Bowl right after this on Sports Channel. take on the Flyers Sunday afternoon at 5.30. There's a look at the numbers through three quarters. Miami with 402 total yards to 189 for Pittsburgh, and Miami with a 35-10 lead on the scoreboard. Third and five for the Hurricanes to open the fourth quarter. From their own 27, Daryl Jones in motion. Covington looking for Jones and has him at the 32. Jones tripped up as he reaches the 34-yard line and just did get enough for a Miami first down. Yeah, I almost brought the catch back in, not getting the first down. Covington trying to lead him where no defenders were. Darrell Jones takes the catch and actually decides to go back to the inside, but still was aware where the first down markers were. That's his 12th catch of the season. You see there he had 139 yards coming into the into this game and the biggest touchdown of the hurricane <laughs> I, season i was just gonna mention that the game winner at west virginia first and ten miami covington over the middle completes a fulcher the tight end brought down immediately by ken cachevera who held it to a gain of four that like. time, Scott felt the pressure coming from the outside, John, and hit his checkoff man. I like what they're doing with Mondrell Fulcher coming out of the backfield position. It's a little changeup for this game, and I'm sure they'll have something else off of that formation for next week, but a nice check down, as you said, Frank, by the quarterback, Scott Covington. Wilbur Valdez in at fullback now. Edron James remains the tailback. Second and six, Miami from their 39. Give to James. James bursting through. James at midfield. Edger into the 40. Got a block from Andre King and finally taken down by Dinkins inside the Pittsburgh 23-yard line. What a terrific move was made by Edger and James at the point of attack right from the line of scrimmage. Did a great job of making the Panthers miss. He was in, he was in open space, and one of the Panther defenders had lined him up and was trying to deliver the knockout blow. There you see number 22, it looked like, for the Panthers, Tom, uh, Thompson, Kareem Thompson, the linebacker, and... Edrin just made him miss and followed his blocking down the football field. He gets an excellent block down the field by his wide receiver, number 84, Andre King. They freeze him up for another 10 yards in a big play. It was a 39-yard gain for Edrin James. He now has 18 carries for 92 yards, and he needs 12 more yards to reach 1,000 for the season. There's an injured Panther back in Miami territory at the 43-yard line. It's Brandon Dewey, a 6'4", 245-pound freshman from Imperial, Pennsylvania. And the pit trainers are working on him right now. So Edger and James, who does have three touchdowns, but really hasn't, you know, broken loose a big run until that last play where he goes for 39 and now is within a dozen yards of his second consecutive 1,000-yard season, and that would be a history maker for the Hurricanes. Yeah, he deserves it. The way he's played the last four weeks coming out and really providing the leadership on the ground following that offensive line that's done such a nice job. He's played a terrific football game, this a terrific game tonight, and terrific second half of the season. Just needs to carry it out two more weeks. And his biggest play up to that point was the uh, second play of the game, the, the, actually the reception for the touchdown. But that's a good sign. I like when Miami throws to their backs and gets these guys out in, in open territory where they can use those running skills. First and 10 Hurricanes at the Panther 22-yard line. Fulcher in motion. Give to James. James to the 20. James to the 15. 
And Chuck Brown makes the tackle there after a pickup of almost eight yards. Yeah, that pit defense looks pretty tired right now, and taking advantage of them is number five, Edron James. This is what I thought I would see earlier in the football game, a little bit more room to run for Edron. The Miami offensive line really attacking the pit defensive line and winning that battle up front. And on that offensive line, it's the second unit guys on the right side, 65 Martin Bibble and 76 Robert Sampson in the ball game now. Wise, Mercier, and Hall, the first teamers, remain in from the center out to the left tackle. James again. James will be about a yard shy of the first down. Cachabera making the tackle along with Pegram. That'll bring up third and short for Miami. And Edward saying to himself, maybe I should have went that other way because it looked like there was a hole over there. Kenny Pegram did a nice job for the Pitt Panthers, the defensive tackle. The senior did a nice job of stalemating Edron James in that offensive line on second down. Well, it's third and a yard for the Canes. Miami 6 of 10 on third down conversions in this football game, which has 12 minutes and 28 seconds to go. Culture motion. James again. James ran right into the back of Seth Hornack, who, who had his back turned, and he might be short of the first down. So we'll see what Miami opts to do, and Andy Cross and the field goal unit come onto the field. And I'm sure Butch Davis is thinking here is, well, we hadn't attempted that many this year. Maybe Andy just needs the work. So from 30 yards away, you see four of seven. Miami scored on a fake field goal in the third quarter. Crossland will attempt from 30. Kick is on the way, and the kick is good. So Andy Crossland converts from 30 yards out. And with 11.41 left to go in the fourth quarter, Miami extends their lead. It is now 38 to 10. We'll be right back at the Orange Bowl here on Sports Channel with the Hurricanes leading by 28. Do you believe the old way of buying gas is dead? We do. Speed Pass from Mobile. It's the fastest way to get gas. Just wave it past the pump. And like magic, you're gone. Speed Pass, only at Mobile, lets you take wing. I believe I can fly. Kick off your Sundays with your own tailgate party at your house. Each week during the football season, Heineken will select four winners to receive an at-home tailgate party, complete with food and plenty to drink, and they'll even let you borrow a big screen TV. Compliments of sound advice. Just stop by participating Heineken retail locations and fill out an entry form. Then tune into Sports Channel's Sunday Morning NFL to see who the weekly winners were. You could be next. Kick off your Sundays with Heineken. No purchase necessary. Must be 21 years of age or older to enter. See participating retailers for official rules. Here's your scoring drive. Miami nine plays, 64 yards, four minutes and 38 seconds, culminating in the Andy Crossland field goal, and Edger and James accounting for 48 of the 64 yards. And unofficially, we have him at 101 yards on the night, which would leave him three yards shy of 1,000. And Scott Covington with the bandage on the chin, and statistically a very good night for Scott. That's right. Welcome to the club with that bandage on the chin. 17 for 23. 287, a touchdown and an interception, but all in all, Scott Covington finding ways to make enough plays to put his team out ahead, 38 to 10. 287 for Scott Covington, but uh, he's got a way to go to catch uh, John Congemi for the <laughs> single game. Pete Gonzalez, 470 last year against Rutgers, and our man, John Congemi, 446 yards against the midshipmen. Yeah, that was a pretty good afternoon. Three, three, Guess quarter, so. three quarters of work, it was pretty decent. Potut at the goal line. That should be a block in the back, and I don't know if it's going to get called, yeah. but Nate Brooks dra drags down Poteet at the 17-yard line, but Mike Rumpf got shoved in the back. Yeah, no flag. I didn't see the flag, but I did see the shove in the back. Okay, here it is, my weekly dig at a Big East crew. All right, go Ooh, ahead. Oh, they missed a call. What a shock that what would be. What a shock. Out in the open. First and 10, Pittsburgh now from the 17-yard line. John Smith, Jr., our referee. It's 38-10 Miami with 11 minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Schneider, the fullback, in motion. Lytle, three-step drop over the middle, complete to his tight end. 
And Kirk McMullen has his second catch of the night and a pickup of about five. By the way, Pete Gonzalez needed overtime to set that passing yardage record. Yeah, that's true. That's and you, true. it says here, it says here, you came out after three quarters. Might have been a half. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> You know, I want to make five years from now, you, five I might years, not even have played. Right, five years from now, you left after the first quarter. <laughs> I love, I love history. You can change it to make yourself look good. Schneider in motion. Lyle to Mendenhall again, or McMullen rather, and that is complete for a first down. As Rod Mack had the coverage along with Nate Webster. Pickup is six, and Pittsburgh will move the chains with 10:49 left to go. Well, I take it as a good sign that Nate Webster is still in the football game. That turf toe that bothered him during the week, obviously not bothering him this evening. He came in late in the first quarter and, and continued to play well throughout this football game. That's a good sign because they're desperately gonna need him down the stretch against two very talented football teams. Absolutely, and against two quarterbacks who can hurt you running out of the pocket. Lytle again will throw. Pass is tipped and incomplete. Going for RJ English and Nick Ward had good coverage. Nice break on the football that time by number three, Nick Ward. I thought all the cornerbacks and not really the secondary of Miami really broke well on the football. Lytle takes a long time to get the football out there with his delivery and his kind of awkward motion, but he does a nice job of breaking on the football. You see right there, kind of a wounded duck to the outside, but still got out there with some authority, and Nick Ward was in perfect position to break on the football. Second and 10. Barlow now the only running back. I mean, coming on a blitz, and Barlow will pick up about a yard or two. Quincy Hips had him around the ankles and then got help from Brian Stinson, number 95. Stinson, the sophomore out of Deland, Florida, 6'4", 250 pounds. Walt Harris, Big East Coach of the Year last year and now struggling in his second season at Pittsburgh. Yeah, very discouraging uh, second season after coming in. Can you see the rushing yards? Just Pittsburgh was stopped rushing the football. Miami 123 yards on the, on the evening to Pittsburgh's 51. Third and nine for the Panthers. Lytle forced out of the pocket. Loads up and throws and incomplete going for Murphy. And Nate Brooks. Nate Terry Murphy pay the price. Yeah, and also Delvin Brown coming over and really delivering a shot to number 81, Terry Murphy. He was hurting a couple plays a couple series ago with that right leg. I'm sure he's going to be sure, sore after this play. Lytle does a nice job of avoiding the pressure provided by Quincy Hips. Tries to throw a strike to the outside. He's going, get down, get down, and I just didn't do it. But that was a great break on the football by Delvin Williams. Greg DeBolt upon a low line drive. Moss will take it on one bounce at his 35. Santana Moss with flags down has dropped at the Miami 48 yard line and this will be a illegal block against the Hurricanes I'm sure. Oh well that one they saw. Yeah. <laughs> they got their eyes on that one. Only a 37 yard punt by DeBolt who has struggled most of the night. It's a little bit of a change for Miami in the punt return game. Santana Moss seeing his yeah. first action as a punt returner. Uh, normally it's Leonard Myers or Nick Ward. Kind of like what I see two out of Santana Moss, provide you with an instant spark. Doing the return, holding, return team, 10 yards, assessed at the spot of the foul, first and 10. So from the spot of the foul, they move it from the 43 to the 33. That's where Miami and Kenny Kelly in a quarterback now will start when we return to play. 9.29 left to go, fourth quarter. Hurricanes 38, Pittsburgh 10. take on the Flyers Sunday afternoon at 
Nine minutes, 29 seconds left to go fourth quarter at the Orange Bowl as Miami leads John Jemmy's old school, wow. Pittsburgh, 38 to 10. And speaking of which, we have shown you some of John's numbers over the years and how he ranks in Pittsburgh's all-time passing list, which was very impressive. But uh, we want to show you some pictures of John that we dug uh -oh. up uh -oh. from the archives. <laughs> and uh, there it is. <laughs> there I am yeah. with the hat. Yeah, that's in you the with center. the hat right in the middle. <laughs> right? And obviously uh, some good-looking guys on that team. The sign says, just throw it, I think. Just throw it. <laughs> and uh, there's John <laughs> there we go. playing without a face mask, as usual. Yeah, that's why I talk the way I do. That's right. And, uh, why your why your orthodontist made lots yeah. and look at this showing off the abs. Boy, look at that. When I had them. Wow. I don't know. That might not be me. <laughs> <laughs> That's when they had those old tearaway jerseys. Yeah. Remember those? Yeah, those were great. Oh, they especially were, on a hot afternoon. They were like a Kleenex. <laughs> just, <laughs> That's right. Just tear them off, guys. I'm glad they outlawed those plans. John still has abs like that. Yeah. At least I tell my wife that. <laughs> First and ten, Hurricanes from the 33-yard line. Kenny Kelly is the quarterback. And he gives it to James Jackson. Jackson, some nice room across the 40. And out to the 43-yard line, Amir Purifoy on the tackle for Pittsburgh. But that's a gain of nine yards on first down by James Jackson. Miami now on the offensive front, going with the starting right tackle, Joaquin Gonzalez. But the second unit, uh, the rest of the second unit is in there. Martin Bibla, Eric Schnupp at center, Brett Romberg at left guard, and Robert Sampson who played the last series at right tackle, now swings over to left tackle. Clock moving with 8.56 to go. And Miami trying to put the capper on this 38-10 lead right now over to Pittsburgh Panthers. Second and a yard. Kelly fumbles the snap, picks it up. He's going to try and make something out of it, but uh, he cannot as Seth Hornack came shooting across to throw him for an eight-yard loss. Yes, yeah, Seth Hornack coming right across the field. Looked like a little bit of a, an exchange problem with center and quarterback. That's Seth's fifth tackle for a loss on the season. Looks like it slipped right through Kenny Kelly's hands, and that'll happen on a, on a humid evening. And Kenny trying to make a play with his, his running ability, but just gets caught from behind. Call it a loss of nine, and it'll bring up third and ten for the Hurricanes. Najee Davenport. You might have seen on that last play, it was in there at the running back position. Now James Jackson is back in on the third and 10. Play clock down to seven. And Kelly calls timeout as he was not going to get the playoff before that play clock expired. Yeah, it looked like he was running to the sideline trying to get the play and it took up a little bit more time than he than he thought, but a smart play to take the timeout. You have them to burn, you might as well use them. 7.59 left to go fourth quarter. It's Miami 38, Pittsburgh 10. We'll be right back at the Orange Bowl after this. And don't miss out on next Saturday's Big East Showdown. The Hurricanes continue their quest toward a bowl bid when they travel to the Carrier Dome to battle Syracuse. Our coverage begins at 11.30 p.m. right here on Sports Channel. John and I will be there to call all the action. Back and to your alma mater. Yeah, my alma mater. Of course, when I went there, they didn't have the carrier done. That's right. You were cold. What was that? What was that? Archbold, Archbold Stadium. Archbold Stadium. That's oh, right. With the concrete bleachers. <laughs> that were very close to home. Yeah, tell me when it was about 10 degrees out. That Ooh. was a lot of fun with a 2-9 and nine football team. No. Yee. But we digress. <laughs> Third and 10 for the Hurricanes. James Jackson, the lone running back behind Kenny Kelly. Pittsburgh on the blitz. Kelly is drilled. Marlon Young with his second sack on the night, dropping Kenny Kelly. And Miami will be forced to punt. Yeah, unblocked. And James Jackson had a look on his face to tell Kenny Kelly, maybe I'm sorry about that lookout block. I'm not sure if that was James' responsibility. Definitely it was. He ran right by him and drills the quarterback. Marlon Young comes in really untouched. And you see James Jackson going, sorry, there's nothing I could do about it. Crossland to punt. Poteet will field at his 40 and falls down under good coverage. Now Pittsburgh will start first and 10 from their 38. Delvin Brown under the cover of that 38-yard punt by Crossland. 7.23 left to go as Walt Harris sends Matt Lytle back out there. We have not seen Matt O'Connor, the backup quarterback for Pittsburgh tonight. That's one of the positions that... Coach Harris was talking to me before the game that they really desperately need to go out and recruit a, a quarterback that can lead them in the next couple of years because they need to get someone in with, with some youth to replace what, what, they, what they're going to lose. 
Backs in the eye, and Barlow motions out of it. Lytle, three-step drop. Pass to Murphy, incomplete, and he takes a hit in the ribs from Marquise Fitzgerald for his trouble. Yeah, Terry's kind of tired of taking that shot by the, the Hurricane defensive backs. It seems like every time they try to throw a quick three-step drop, the ball is very high and inside, and Terry Murray does not want to go up and get this football because he knows the closing speed of Marquise Fitzgerald. He's right on him, and you got to credit Terry Murray's toughness because he's been trying to go and get the football. Fitzgerald and Rumpf at the corners for the Hurricanes. Popovich and Delvin Brown, the safeties. Second and 10. Give to Barlow. Barlow finds some room for one of the few times tonight, and he'll pick up first down yardage out to the 48-yard line of Pittsburgh, a gain of almost 11. Delvin Brown making the tackle, but it is enough to move the chains with 7.18 left to go fourth quarter. Barlow did a nice job following the left side, and Brown and McCurley, 73 and 60 respectively, did a nice job coming and winding his way through the hole. He doesn't rush through it. He has patience in the backfield. Then he has an opening, and he turns it on and gets close to a first down and actually gets the first down. On first and 10, Lytle. Again to Murphy, and he can't hang on with Fitzgerald again in tight coverage. There's a look at Nate Webster on the right, Edger and James on the left. I think they go to the same stylist, Frank. They do. Huh? They do. Looks pretty good. Well, they've looked good all year, both those guys. I tell you what, they're, they're two players right there that sell it out every Saturday and every Thursday night in this, in this instance because... Number 52, Nate Webster, wasn't even supposed to dress out tonight and really play a lot. He was going to dress but not get into the football game. And I think he had had enough after the late into the first quarter. And Edron James, what can you say about his past four weeks? He's done a terrific job. He's been sensational providing the running stability for this offense that, the, that it needs. And Scott Covington's put in his fair share, but Edron James has done a terrific job. There's a bit of a stoppage in play as the officials uh, again confer near the 50-yard line. Miami now going with the linebacking group of Rod Mack in the middle. Chris Campbell, the freshman, on the outside. Excuse me, Rod Mack playing the uh, outside linebacker and Shevin Marshall, number 41, in at the middle backer. And it's second and 10 for Pittsburgh. 6.56 left to go fourth quarter. Three wide receivers in the formation for the Panthers. And a mix up, and Lytle's going to take off and run. And hits the deck at the 50 yard line as Rod Mack covered him at that point. The busted play, and Lytle made two yards out of it. Yeah, some confusion in the pit backfield, and that's what you're supposed to do for a quarterback. You try to run where you're supposed to hand off the football, and Lytle makes a couple yards on second down. And Walt Harris very discouraged on the sideline because everything he's tried to do la everything he tried to do last year seemed like work to perfection in getting the Panthers to a bowl game and this year everything that could go wrong has gone wrong third and eight Fiola the lone running back Lytle under pressure goes back to the other side and it's incomplete again Marquise Fitzgerald draped all over the wide receiver Julius Dixon that's great coverage for about three or four plays in a row. Every time they've tried to go to the short side of the field, the freshman cornerback, Marquise Fitzgerald, has done a terrific job of staying with the Pittsburgh Panther receivers, and particularly Terry Murray, the senior wideout. Well, Santana Moss drops back to the 10-yard line to receive the Greg DeBolt punt. DeBolt hangs it high. Moss started to signal fair catch and didn't. He may have a wall, too at the 10 yard line and he'll go no further than that. Good coverage by the Pittsburgh special teams. Mark Ponko, number 11, making the play and Miami will start first and 10 at their 10 after a 40 yard kick from Greg DeBolt. Santana got that arm about up to shoulder level and then pulled it back down on that I fair know. catch. He said, well, I got 5.57 left to go. Let me see if I can get into the end zone. He's, he's looked pretty good back there. I think that we may see that on the, on the turf next week up at Syracuse in the Carrier Dome. He could make something happen in special teams. Well, he certainly got the explosive speed. We know that. And he's done a great job handling the ball tonight. First and 10 Miami. Kelly the quarterback. Wilbur Valdez and now Najee Davenport join him in the backfield. Tight end Fulcher in motion. And Najee Davenport has the ball for the first time tonight and busts through to the 20. 25 still going. And finally hauled down at the 34-yard line by Seth Hornack. 
But Najee Davenport comes in the game and rips off 24 yards. That's a tired pit defense, but that's a great run and great toughness going through right tackle. Watch the run. He must break four or five arm tackles getting through. There you see him getting hit twice about five yards down the football field. Now he, he drags Trey Creighton along with him until Seth Hornick can jump on his back number 26, but a nice run on first down by Najee Davenport. You see there 7.8 yards, his average on the season in five touchdowns. First and 10 Hurricanes at their 34. Darrell Jones in motion. Pitch to Davenport. Davenport lowers the shoulder and will pick up only about a yard. Trey Creighton on the tackle for the Pittsburgh defense. But, you know, you're on the Pittsburgh defense. You've gotten battered all game by Edger and James. Who's and, this guy? And now, you know, <laughs> James Jackson comes in there and gives you a little flash. And now Najee at 6'2", 235 and runs about a 4-4-5 comes in there. And you're going, when did these guys stop? I hope there's not a fourth back coming out because Najee, as you said, the biggest of all three of the running backs of the University of Miami, 6'2", 235, and on that last couple of runs, he shows you what he can do with his speed as well. Pickup was a yard on the last play. It's second and nine from the 35. Fake to Davenport. Kelly with good protection. Finds Andre King at the 45-yard line. And that's enough for a first down. 10-yard pickup. Look at Edger and James' career numbers moving up the ladder. He is already second on the Hurricane all-time list. And if he does return for his senior season, you would certainly think he is uh, better than even money to break Otis Anderson's career rushing That's yardage right. record. He's got a shot, especially with that offensive line all coming back. A very uh, young offensive line and a, a new quarterback next season in Kenny Kelly, but a, a very veteran offensive line will be back. Hurricanes with a double tight end. And they will throw out of that formation. Swing it out to Jackson, incomplete. Not a good throw from Kenny Kelly. And a flag down. Might be an illegal formation on Miami. And procedure is the call. That'll cost the Hurricanes five. If Pittsburgh decides to take it. Illegal formation, offense, five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat. Pittsburgh will accept first the penalty. Down. It'll be first and 15. My partner right on the ball with 5.14 left to go. I'll tell you what. You only got six men on the line. That's, That's a penalty. Right. Sometimes those things happen when you've got, uh, you know, second-teamers and third-teamers in the game. Aaron Mosier's in at wide receiver now. He is set to the bottom of the formation. Again, the double tight end. Kelly still has the football. Kelly looking for his tight end. Dan Smith juggles and can't make the catch. And a good throw by Kelly. That one he put right in the bread basket. And Dan Smith, who had a touchdown earlier tonight, could not hang on. Yeah, that was a good throw and a nice play fake by Kenny Kelly. Going to the outside. He'll fake off tackle. Nice play fake. Comes up, squares his shoulders, and delivers a strike down the middle of the football field. But you got to come up with that catch. The first one for the touchdown was easy by Dan Smith. This time he's on the move and can't come up with the grab. Second and 15 with 5.08 left to go in the fourth quarter. And most of the crowd has headed to the parking lot to beat the traffic. From the Hurricane 40. And looked like Joaquin Gonzalez flinched. Rocked in the stance, and that'll cost Miami five more. Well, things getting a little bit sloppy here as we wind down toward the end of this game. It'll be second and 20 now for Miami. As you look at Butch Davis in his fourth year as the Hurricane head coach. And certainly uh, penalties have not been a big deal tonight for either team. No key penalties, certainly. No, but that could be come into play next week. That's something that the Miami team really wants to, to negate is penalties and turnovers, and that'll beat you on the road. Valdez and Davenport, the running backs behind Kelly. We give this to Davenport. Najee looking for some room and cannot get away. No gain. He'll bring up third and 20. Pete Simonian making the tackle for Pittsburgh. And the clock continues to move as Najee has to retie the shoe. Najee said, just tell me what the play is before I get to the line <laughs> of scrimmage. I'll take my time. Aaron Mosier and Daryl Jones, the wide receivers, play clock down to seven. 
Pittsburgh showing blitz against the freshman quarterback. They come out of it. Kelly over the middle. Mosier makes the catch inside Pittsburgh territory, and Aaron Mosier will go down at the 48-yard line, about three and a half yards shy of a first down. Seth Hornack making the tackle. Another nice throw by Kenny Kelly over the middle and a nice grab going full speed by Aaron Mosier. Aaron Mosier, the Big East decathlon champion. Here is the Hurricanes' remaining schedule. November 28th, the showdown with Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. And then December 5th, third-ranked UCLA in the makeup game from the Hurricane George will be here at the Orange Bowl. Tim Stein back to receive the punt, signaling fair catch and makes it at the 11-yard line. They're going to flag Miami for being too close to the returner as Nick Ward ran by him. Well, that's all, almost two penalties on Nick Ward in the last two special teams. The prior one, he actually hit a pit defender a little bit late after someone was aggressive with one of his teammates, and Butch Davis called him to the side, and now you have a, another penalty on special teams. I think if he's waving his hand as he went by. Five-yard violation, the two-yard halo. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, you've got to give him two yards. Ah, oh boy, I... That's really not a, that's a bad call. All right, I, I've already been on my soapbox once tonight yeah. about Big East officials, so I'll stay off I at take this time. It I take it back too, Nick. That wasn't a penalty. Five yards, and it moves it up to the 17-yard line. Well, this is this defense ready, Frank? <laughs> Look at Michael Lawson. He's got the whole face eye blacked up. He's going to have to be ready next <laughs> week with chasing Donovan McNabb. That's for sure. The sixth annual Hip Golf Classic to benefit the University of Miami Student Athlete Scholarship Fund will be held Monday, January 18th at the Weston Hills Country Club. Great golf for a great cause. Call 305-284-2491 to secure your spot in the Hip Golf Classic. Do you think uh, Michael Lawson hit anybody with that face mask? It didn't look that chipped up, <laughs> did it? No. <laughs> we get another I'll shot tell you what, th those guys by this point in the season, their helmets are they're all repainted. You know, if they don't, if they like them repainted, some guys like them all chipped up to uh, they keep show how way. hard they That's how hard they've been scars. That's, That's right, the battle, battle scars. scars. Mike, but look around. at the face mask. Look at that. Well, paint's wearing off that. He must get a key at night. Say, so I'm going to get it a little bit dark, a little bit darker on this side. Oh, he keys up the face <laughs> mask. <laughs> yeah. Let me drill a key into the sucker. <laughs> Michael Lawson having uh, his best season as a senior. He That's has, uh, true. Come on for the Hurricanes. Uh, does not start, but plays a lot in the defensive tackle rotation and has come up with a number of plays this year. 27 tackles coming into the game, four sacks, a couple of forced fumbles, and three fumble recoveries. New quarterback in the game for the Panthers. It'll be Matt O'Connor, junior college transfer, 6'3", 200 pounds, a junior out of Aloha, Oregon. Actually started the game, I believe, against Syracuse a yes, couple weeks back. He's only 6 of 21 on the season. First down from the 17. That's to Barlow. Barlow has the corner. Barlow up to the 30, and Mike Rump takes him down there with help from Jeff Popovich. Gain is 14, and a first down for Pittsburgh. As Javon Rhodes, the defensive end, reserve defensive end, got pinned inside. There's Lytle signaling in the plays from the Pittsburgh sideline. Three minutes, 37 seconds, and the clock moving here in the fourth quarter. At one point, it was a 7-7 ball game late in the first quarter. Since then, it's been pretty much all Hurricanes. From just past the 30, O'Connor gives to Barlow. Barlow again gets to the corner. Barlow 40. Barlow being chased from behind by James Lewis, and he's taking it for a ride. Is. Barlow finally dropped it to Miami, 32-yard line. A gain of 37 yards by James Kevin Barlow. Lewis, yeah. Looked like he was going uh, for a ride and, and really went by. Where's West Palm? Here's Fort Lauderdale coming up on Miami Beach. You see a couple Hurricanes miss. Jeff Popovich missing. And Barlow just takes Lewis for a ride. He jumps on at about the 45 or 50. And Barlow says, come on, I got to go a couple more places. And he takes it down all the way to the Miami 32-yard line. Michael Lawson limped off after that last play. Here's O'Connor's first throw. Going deep, Mike Rump up, and Mike Rump comes up with the interception. That's nice to see, Frank. A couple weeks ago, and when he was starting against West Virginia, he gave up a lot of cushion, and you see him go up and win a jump ball, something the Miami defenders have to learn to do when they're playing some athletic offensive receivers, and a nice play by Michael Rump. Mike Rump's first career interception, the true freshman out of Delray Beach. 
and a second look as O'Connor is picked off. Just slightly underthrown by Matt O'Connor, wanted to get a little bit more air under this football, and you see the receiver trying to go up R.J. English to fight for the football, but Michael Rump wanted it worse. He gets his first collegiate interception. You see him just take it right out of the sky. A nice play by the freshman DB. Well, Miami starts first and 10 at their four-yard line. Valdez and Davenport, the running backs behind Kelly. This is Davenport trying to get around the corner and picks up a couple of yards before Chuck Brown makes the tackle. 2.42 left to go here in the fourth quarter at the Orange Bowl. It's 38-10, Hurricanes in the lead. As you see Kenny Kelly, the freshman quarterback from Tampa, Florida, and a member of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays baseball organization, one of their minor league outfielders. That's true, he has a terrific future in baseball, but I like the way he throws the football too. Well, he may have a pretty good future in football. Very poised young man. Pickup was three by Davenport on the last play as Kelly milks the play clock down. Again, Davenport with the football, and this time nowhere to go, just buried back at the five-yard line. Ryan Gonzalez making the tackle along with Trey McRae, and a penalty flag down at the Hurricane nine-yard line. Illegal block against Miami, illegal chop block. Illegal block, blow it away, offense, penalty, and the the penalty. brings up it was a third down. loss of two yards. And it'll bring up third and seven. You see the Canes have won 56 consecutive games when they outrush their opponents. Tonight they're not outrushing Pittsburgh by much, although Barlow picked up Got about, a lot of it. about yeah. 55 yards in that last possession on two runs. Miami has surrendered four sacks tonight for a loss of 42 yards. This is a third and nine. <laughs> Kelly will give it to Davenport. And then Davenport again has nowhere to go. They'll give him progress to the four yard line, but that's a loss of a yard and it will bring up a punting situation. Najee. It was a lot easier a couple series ago when they had some, some field position. This time the uh, Pitt Panthers tee off on consecutive plays and tackle Nijay for no gain. So a series that goes nowhere for the Hurricanes. Crossland will kick it out of the end zone. Poteet back to receive. Poteet at the Hurricane 44. And down he goes. Beautiful special teams coverage from Jeff Popovich and Pat Del Vecchio. Delvecchio coming down. He did that a couple times last week in the Temple game along with Jeff Popovich. Nice special teams coverage by the Hurricanes. Now you look at Jeff Popovich. Look how buffed up he is. He came to this school. He was a skinny little quarterback from Tucson, Arizona. Now he's all V'd up and buffed up, man. He could be in the World Wrestling Federation. Way. I tell you <laughs> what, he's a good football player. He's a hard-nosed football player. Doesn't have the greatest skills in the world, but he gives you everything he's got every second he's out there. From the Miami 42. And whistles blow as this play will not count and will not continue. A minute and seven left to go. It's Miami 38 and Pittsburgh 10. As this game has slowed to a crawl here late in the fourth quarter, it's procedure Office. against Pittsburgh. Five yard, Mains first down. Well, the Panthers have one game remaining against uh, West Virginia. And as we've stated, the Miami Hurricanes have their future ahead of them. They have to go travel to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse next week for the Big East Championship. First and 15 for Pittsburgh. O'Connor again drops to throw, and Michael Lawson sacks him. There he is. Well, he limped off on the last series, but he looks okay to me. Put another scratch in that helmet for Michael Lawson. He came out of nowhere from the middle of the football field and sacks Matt O'Connor. Fifth sack of the year for Michael Lawson. Lost back to the Pittsburgh 45. He wants another Look out. One. O'Connor gets it out to Barlow, who escapes Chris Campbell. And Jeff Popovich has to drag him down at the Miami 46-yard line. That's a pickup of nine. And it'll bring up third and about 14. Pittsburgh Matt, in the hurry up. Yeah, Matt O'Connor trying to put his shoe on real quick and get the Panthers up to the line of scrimmage. They can run a couple more plays. O'Connor on third down. Stepping up, throwing over the middle, complete to R.J. English at the Hurricane 37-yard line, but that's going to be shy of a first down by about four yards. It'll bring up fourth down with 17 seconds to go, and Pittsburgh is going to call a timeout. 
So the Hurricanes will improve to seven and two, five and one in the Big East. Pittsburgh will drop to two and eight and zero oh and six in the Big East. You see Walt Harris still coaching his, his junior college transfer, saying you have three timeouts on the play before, getting him ready for a situation possibly down the road next season when he looks like he'll be the incumbent at quarterback. Yes, is that something that Butch Davis does a lot? On, you know, you take a look at him on the sideline, Walt Harris. They're always constantly coaching. And they're always trying to put something in the back of their players' mind. So when they are in a game situation in a tight football game, they may it may come to them a little bit more easier. But it's a lot easier to do it in a win when you're up 38 to 10 than you, than doing it in a loss. There's no question about it, John. Just the you look at this Miami team and the difference from last year to this year in terms of strength, in terms of endurance, in terms of their mental approach to the game. You know, last year they let games get away from them in the fourth quarter. Last year they didn't seem like they were mentally prepared for some of these teams in the Big East. This year they've come out, and you know, aside from the overtime loss to Virginia Tech, a game in which they turned it over five times, they've come out against teams that you, you think they should beat, and they have gotten the job done. Well, I think it all starts from the coaching staff. I think they worked a little bit harder, you know, it all it's it's a really an effect it just goes down from the top to the bottom and i think butch davis and coaching staff they've done a better job i thought the training staff and the, and the uh the people that get the players in top condition they've done a better job and the players have made plays fourth and four o'connor throws bounced it in to his receiver english incomplete and so miami will take over english made the catch but it's one hop and that doesn't count in this game so with 13 seconds left, the Hurricanes will take over. And they will put a 38-10 win in the books, uh, avenging last year's crushing defeat up at Pittsburgh, a game which sent Miami spiraling into mediocrity at 5-6. and six. It was only the third game of the season, but you could tell the effect it had on, on the team, even after the game. It, you know, Butch yeah. Davis in the locker room looked like he just lost his best friend. And uh, I think he found a friend this year about four or five games ago because they Miami Hurricanes have really turned it on. Well, certainly you have to look at the game up at West Virginia as a, a benchmark win for this young football team. Kenny Kelly takes a knee, and that'll do it. You see the countdown as Butch Davis will walk over, shake hands with Walt Harris, and Miami has their seventh win of the season and their fifth in a row in the Big East. It's Miami 38 and the Pittsburgh Panthers 10. John, a good night for the Hurricanes offensively. And the big play in the third quarter, the one that really salted it away, was the fake field goal by Jeff Popovich that he takes for the touchdown. Yeah, that was a great call. They did a great job coming out. They score on their second play of the football game. They fight through a first quarter and in the middle of a second quarter. They didn't play their best, but they came out. They score right before halftime, and they score on their initial drive of the third quarter. That was the difference, Frank. We'll be back to wrap it up from the Orange Bowl right after this, your final. Miami 38, Pittsburgh 10. of Miami football on Sports Channel is being brought to you in part by Heineken, brewed the same way since 1886. By Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. By the Cleveland Clinic, every life deserves world-class care. By Clean Shower, you'll never clean your shower again, and the people at Clean Shower guarantee it. By Office Depot, business is crazy, but Office Depot makes sense. And by your South Florida Ford dealers, you can't afford not to drive a Ford. Back at the Orange Bowl, and there's a look at your final score once again. The Miami Hurricanes 38, the Pittsburgh Panthers 10, a very workmanlike, efficient victory for the Hurricanes. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel. And, well, the Canes just take care of business tonight, John. They need a win to set up the big showdown with Syracuse. That's exactly what they went out and did. They came out, and they scored on the second play of the football game. They fought through some lethargic times maybe in the end of the first quarter and, and middle of the second, but they scored before halftime. They did a great job coming out. Special teams, they score on special teams. Jeff Popovich, and look at the pass yardage, 358 yards. Uh, they had 137 yards rushing the football. I thought they did a very efficient job when they needed to do, when they had the football. They put it in the end zone. They didn't have to settle for field goals, and that's, that's a key when you're playing a team that, that Pittsburgh, they hung around a little bit, hung around in the beginning, but Miami gave them a knockout punch right around halftime. And a couple of firsts for the Hurricanes tonight. First career interception for freshman Mike Rumpf. First career touchdown for tight end Dan Smith and three touchdowns from Edger and James. Well, thanks for joining us here at the Orange Bowl. You can catch more University of Miami football on Sports Channel next Saturday, November 28th at 11.30 p.m. when the Hurricanes battle the Syracuse Orangemen for the Big East title. 
Football fans, don't miss Sports Channel's Sunday morning playbook. It's kickoff at 8.30 with Dolphins Magazine, followed by the Tom Coughlin Show at 9, the Jimmy Johnson Show at 9.30. Then at 10 o'clock, an hour and a half of in-depth NFL pregame coverage on Sunday morning NFL. That's all right here on Sports Channel. For my broadcast partner and future member of this PGA Senior Tour, John Kajemi, I'm Frank Fort saying goodbye. Once again, the final score, Miami 38, Pittsburgh 10. So long, everyone.